After Ariana walked out of Mr. Hernandez's office, she called Henry and asked him where he was. He and Ariana's other friends had just finished walking around the museum and were back in the main hall. So we told Ariana their location and she went to meet them. They gathered together again in the main hall and Ava asked, Is it done? Yep, Ariana replied. Did you see the immortal? She added. No, but we may run into him when we leave the museum. Why don't we leave separately and meet again when we're far away from this place? Asked Ava. As she said that, she suddenly realized that she might sound like she was trying to protect herself at the expense of the others. She quickly explained, I'm simply afraid that you'll get in bigger trouble if we run into the man and let him know about our relationship. I had the same worry, and I don't want you to be affected. I'm his target anyway, so I think I should go out first. If I see him, I'll lead him away from you guys. If not, I'll tell you to come out. What do you think? Ariana proposed. Well, Ava said hesitantly. She didn't want Ariana to put herself in danger. It'll be fine, I promise, Ariana assured her. All right, let's do it, said Henry. He understood that Ariana already made up her mind, and he knew that she could protect herself well. Clara and the others didn't know exactly what had happened, but heard enough of the conversation to know that someone was following Ariana, and Ariana didn't want them to be affected. Even though they didn't care about being followed, Ariana already made up her mind, so they listened to her and followed her plan. Ariana walked out alone and carefully looked at everything around her to see whether the immortal was still there. After looking around for a while, she called Henry and told him that it was safe for him and the others to come out. The group of them then left together and walked away from the museum. Ariana, since someone followed you, are you sure it's all right if we continue to walk around here? Asked Clara worriedly. Right, we don't want you to be in danger, said Michael. The others expressed their worries too. Ariana smiled at them and assured them, It's fine, he was just an unimportant person, so we shouldn't be affected by him. Since Ariana said that, the others dropped the topic. After all, it wouldn't be easy for someone to hurt her, especially when she was surrounded by her friends. The immortal entered the museum several minutes after Ariana walked into it, but he went in the opposite direction that she did, so they didn't see each other. When he arrived at the jade exhibition area, he saw that the jade with the dragon phoenix cloud pattern wasn't on display. He realized that it was quite possible that Ariana really had it in her hands just then. If she had it in her hands, why did she walk out of the museum and then bring it back, he wondered. He didn't want other immortals to know the secret about the jade with the dragon phoenix cloud pattern. He had read a book buried in an ancient immortal's grave that said that the artifact could accumulate magical power, which was very helpful for cultivation. That was why he wanted it for himself. Now that it seemingly disappeared, he was frustrated and angry. He needed to find Ariana, but the palace was too large, and he didn't know where he should go to find her. All of a sudden, he remembered that Ariana's car was still parked outside the south gate, so he went to wait there for her. She would have to go back there sooner or later. At about 10 minutes to 5 o'clock p.m., Ariana and the others were about to leave, because the palace grounds were closing soon and all tourists would be ushered out. They didn't leave through the door that they had originally entered from because the south gate was too far from where they were. Instead, they exited from the north gate. However, their cars were parked at the south gate, so they still needed to go back there. Ariana and Henry volunteered to take a taxi to get back to the cars, while the others stayed at the north gate and waited to be picked up. Ariana and Henry left Ava with Clara and the others. They weren't worried that she would feel awkward because Clara and Harry were friendly and talkative, and they already had gotten to know Ava during the course of the day. Michael and the others weren't as outgoing as Clara and Harry, but they also talked with Ava once in a while. In fact, Ava actually got along quite well with Ariana's friends. With a group of young people by her side, she felt younger herself. After Ariana and Henry hailed a taxi, they casually chatted with each other on the way back to the south gate. However, because the taxi driver was listening in, they had to be careful about what they talked about. The taxi driver was a man who looked to be about 40 years old, and he kept glancing at Ariana from the rearview mirror. She and Henry noticed what he was doing, but didn't say anything about it. Finally, the taxi driver asked curiously, "'Excuse me, miss, but are you the famous businesswoman Ariana Young?' Since the taxi driver recognized her, Ariana replied honestly, yeah, I'm Ariana. Nice to meet you, she said politely. The taxi driver got excited when she introduced herself. 
Ha ha, I'm quite lucky that I have you in my car today, he exclaimed. For the following minutes, the taxi driver kept complimenting Ariana for her great achievements, and she thanked him politely. However, before the taxi driver ran out of compliments, they arrived at their destination. Ariana and Henry started to pay the bill, but the taxi driver initially refused to take their money. However, Ariana wasn't willing to take advantage of him, so he had to accept it in the end. Why did we get out of the car right here? Henry asked Ariana. He was confused because they were about 40 yards away from the parking lot. Ariana answered, I just remembered that the immortal might be waiting for me at the south gate, and I don't want you to be exposed. I'll go to see if he's there first. If he's not, you can follow me. She had only just remembered on their way here that the immortal had seen which car was hers. Henry nodded in understanding and replied, All right, just be careful. He knew that Ariana could sense the air of an immortal from afar, and she had a pair of jade eyes, so there was no need for her to engage in a conflict against the immortal face to face. Therefore, he wasn't too worried. You should be careful too, Ariana instructed him. She was afraid that Henry might run into the immortal before she did. I will, Henry promised. After that, Ariana walked forward. When she was near the parking lot, she used her jade eyes to carefully scan the area. She didn't sense any immortals or see the man, so she called Henry and told him to come over. The immortal actually had waited there for Ariana for a long time, but only five minutes ago, he needed to leave to deal with something else. Coincidentally, when he was gone for five minutes, Ariana and Henry arrived. Henry's car was parked next to Ariana's car, so they walked to their cars together. Ariana checked her car door at once, because she thought that the immortal must have damaged it. She was right, and she quickly saw that the locks on the rear doors had been broken and the window was cracked, so the door wouldn't shut properly anymore. It wasn't a surprise to her, so she wasn't too mad about it. Henry, however, was displeased. He didn't care whether his car was damaged, but it was obvious that the immortal aimed to hurt Ariana. Did the immortal do this? asked Henry. Yeah, he must have thought that I left the jade artifact in the car, Ariana explained. All right, just drive it as it is for a while. We can go back to the Brigala Hotel for dinner, and I'll arrange for someone to replace the car, said Henry. Ariana nodded. After that, they drove away. Because the car door was damaged, Ariana could only close it with a rope. When they drove back to the north gate, Ava got into Henry's car, while Clara and the others climbed into Ariana's car. What the hell? Ariana, your car door was damaged by someone, Harry exclaimed once he saw the car door. Who would do that? Did you try to find out? asked Clara, sounding furious that someone would dare to mess with Ariana's car. In fact, all of Ariana's friends were annoyed on her behalf, and they wanted to get revenge on the person who damaged the car door. The person who followed me before tried to break in, and they damaged the door. It's fine, I'll find him and make him pay for it, Ariana explained airily. She didn't care about the cost of the damage, but she would teach the man a lesson. Why did he do that? Did he think there was something valuable in your car? asked Michael. Perhaps, Ariana said, and then changed the topic at once. So, do you want to go out together tonight or stay in the hotel? I already told the show director that you'll be there before 9 o'clock a.m. tomorrow so you need to get up by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning and leave for the set at 7.30 a.m. Big City Studios is a little far, and you'll probably be caught in traffic during rush hour. I think we should stay in the hotel today. I'm a little tired after walking around for a whole day. If we continue to have fun tonight, I'll be out of energy tomorrow, said Clara. Although she would only have a small role in the show, she cared about doing her best for it. Harry, Clara, and Lynn would join the show as well, while Michael and Rachel would watch from the sidelines. They weren't interested in acting and felt too shy to be on television. The rest of Ariana's friends agreed with Clara and decided to rest after having dinner. Clara and Rachel would go back to Aspen Haven with Ariana, so they had to get up even earlier than the boys tomorrow. Henry already booked a private room in the Regala Hotel's restaurant before they got there, so they went straight there once they arrived. When they finished dinner, the boys went back to their room, and Ariana drove Clara and Rachel back to Aspen Haven, while Henry went back to Mountain River Garden with Ava. Because Logan and his younger sister were in Aspen Haven, it wasn't a good idea for Ava and Henry to stay there. Shortly after they left the hotel, Ariana received a call from her cousin Ron. 
Ron had never called her before, so it had to be about something important. Hi, Ron, Ariana said when she picked up the call. Ariana, I, I, Ron stammered. Ariana could immediately tell that Ron must have encountered trouble. What happened? Tell me, Ariana demanded, and Ron felt stressed. He replied at once, M my girlfriend was lured by her friend to a bar, and she's being forced to stay there by a guy who wants to steal her away from me, along with a bunch of his friends. They told me to go over to have a drinking competition with them. If I win, I can leave with her. If not, they'll beat her up. Ariana, I honestly don't know what to do now. Can you help me? Man, your girlfriend sure gets you into a lot of trouble, Ariana complained. But she was still willing to help Ron since he was helpless. Where are you, she asked. At the front gate of my school, replied Ron. Okay, I'll be there in half an hour, Ariana promised, then hung up the call and pulled over. She turned to look at her friends in the back seat, but before she could say anything, Clara asked, Ariana, what's wrong? My cousin's girlfriend is being harassed by a creep who likes her. The guy and his friends challenged my cousin to drink with them. If he wins, he can leave with his girlfriend. Otherwise, they'll beat the girl up, explained Ariana. There was no need for her to hide what was really happening, because they would be going there with her. What? That's terrible, Clara exclaimed furiously. Are we going to help him? She added. Of course, Ariana answered. Great, I'll kick their asses, said Clara. She was a girl who had a strong sense of justice, and she loved to fight. So now that Ariana's cousin was in trouble, she was ready to do whatever it took to help the situation. After that, Ariana called Harry and told him that she needed to deal with something, and she was bringing Clara and Rachel with her. She asked him whether he and the other boys wanted to join them. She didn't want to make trouble for the boys, but she was afraid that they might be upset with her if they went and had a fight without them. Besides, the boys could be a good help, and they would be safe as long as she was there. Harry was interested as soon as he heard the word fight and agreed at once. After that, Ariana promptly turned the car around and went to pick the boys up. She told them to sit in the back seat and left the front passenger seat open for Ron. So what exactly happened, Harry asked Ariana, once he got in the car. She told them the story and the boys got angry too, and they all vowed to teach the bunch of creeps an unforgettable lesson. After picking up the boys, Ariana sped up and headed to Ron's school. In 20 minutes, they pulled up to the front gate, and Ariana stopped the car directly in front of Ron and gestured for him to get in. Ron didn't know any of Ariana's friends in the back seat of the car, but Ariana didn't bother to introduce them to him yet. She asked him directly, Where is the bar where your girlfriend is at? They're at McGurvin's on Penmar Avenue, Ron answered. Do you know how to get there? asked Ariana. Of course, said Ron. Lead the way, Ariana ordered. All right, go straight for three blocks, then turn left, pointed Ron, and Ariana quickly drove ahead. How much trouble have you been involved in because of your girlfriend, asked Ariana as she sped down the street. Quite a bit, Ron confessed, sounding embarrassed. All because of her other admirers, asked Ariana again. Right, Ron admitted. Ariana stopped asking questions after that. McGurvin wasn't far away from Ron's school, and they arrived in five minutes. Are they in the main hall or in a private room? asked Ariana. In a private room. The room number is V08, said Ron. After that, Ariana and her friends walked inside. When they were approaching room V08, she used her jade eyes to see inside. In the private room, there were three girls and six boys. The three girls were laughing and chatting playfully with the boys, and it didn't seem that any one of them was forced to stay there. Ariana's sight fell on the most beautiful girl among the three girls. She must be Ron's girlfriend, since he had told her that his girlfriend was the prettiest girl in their school. McGurvin's was a high-end bar, so they couldn't break into the private room. They needed to have the waiter ask for permission first. Therefore, they stepped outside of the room, and the waiter went to tell the people inside that others were there to see them. Once the people in the room heard that they were coming, they changed their seats right away. Two girls immediately went to sit in a corner, including the most beautiful one. Ariana sneered as she watched the scene. It was obvious that Ron's girlfriend wasn't who she said she was, and she made Ron come here for an evil purpose. However, she couldn't say that to Ron right now. They had to finish the show first. Before long, the waiter walked out and let them in. As soon as Ariana and her friends went inside, the group of boys stood up and faced them menacingly. 
The boys were taken aback when they saw that Ariane and her friends were all good-looking young teenagers, even younger than they were. The most beautiful girl's eyes flashed with jealousy the second she saw Ariana, and Ariana mentally confirmed that she was not a nice person. Marcy, are you all right? Ron asked his girlfriend, who was indeed the beautiful girl that Ariana had pinpointed before. Marcy turned to look at Ron with an aggrieved expression. I, I'm fine, she stammered. Which one of you is the guy that wants to steal Marcy away from Ron? asked Ariana. It's me, one of the young men said, standing up. He was tall, strong, and fairly good-looking, although not as handsome as Ron. He was wearing designer clothing and gave off an air that suggested that his family was very rich. He continued smugly. Hey there, my name's Tyrone. Does Marcy like you? asked Ariana. The boy was struck dumb for a second and didn't know what to say. Marcy undoubtedly liked him too, but he couldn't say that aloud now. Ariana nodded, her suspicions confirmed. She continued, well, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. If you two like each other, Ron should call it quits with Marcy. If you like her, but she doesn't like you, you should give up, right? We don't need to make things ugly. I just want to win her, so what? If Ron's a man, he'll drink with me, Tyrone replied aggressively. He wanted to get Ron drunk and win Marcy over. Whatever you say, but I don't know whether she's worth it, said Ariana, with a meaningful smile, glancing at Marcy. It was obvious that she didn't think Marcy was worth it. Everyone else was surprised, and they didn't understand what Ariana was insinuating. Just as Ron was about to ask about it, Marcy opened her mouth first. What do you mean? she questioned. She didn't understand how Ariana could possibly say that she wasn't worth it. After all, she was the prettiest girl in their school, and she had countless admirers. Let me ask you, do you like Ron? asked Ariana. Of course, Marcy claimed. Then why did you come to this bar to hang out with Tyrone and his friends? asked Ariana. She knew that Marcy came here of her own will. Marcy was taken aback, then argued. I came here with my friend, and I didn't know that Tyrone would be here too. Your friend didn't know it either? asked Ariana. Exactly, Marcy claimed. If that's the case, did they really forcefully keep you here? asked Ariana. Stop wasting time talking, Tyrone butted in, losing his patience. It's illegal for you to force her to stay here. Let her go with us, or I'll call the police, said Ariana. Call the police? Tyrone repeated disdainfully. Do you think I'm afraid of that? My uncle is the police chief in this area. As long as we don't confess to any crimes, you'll be punished instead for making a false report. Well, Marcy is Ron's girlfriend. Do you think she'll side with you? asked Ariana purposefully. Saying that, she turned to look at Marcy. Am I right? she added. Marcy panicked inwardly. She didn't dare to answer Ariana's question, so she questioned Ron. Who is this woman? Why are you letting her do everything? She's my cousin, replied Ron. Can't you say something? asked Marcy, sounding annoyed. Ron thought that Marcy was nervous, so he comforted her. Marcy, you don't need to be worried. My cousin is excellent at handling situations like this, so we'll be fine with her help, he said. Marcy narrowed her eyes in frustration and didn't know what to say. Ariana butted in. All right, I don't have time to waste on you. Since you said that your uncle is the police chief in this area, I'll call the Public Security Bureau to see if anyone can help with this, she said impatiently and took out her phone. Wait for a second, Tyrone said, stopping her at once, because he didn't want to cause more trouble. Ariana put her phone down. So, can you let her go now? She demanded. Let her go? I don't think she wants to leave with you, said Tyrone disdainfully. Fine, I don't care about the competition anymore. Ron, let me tell you the truth. Marcy already has been intimate with me, and I brought you here simply because I wanted to embarrass you by stealing her away from you. Ron rounded his eyes in shock and stared at Marcy. She, however, avoided his eyes. Clara and the others were also astonished. Only Marcy's friends and Ariana stayed calm because they were already aware that this whole thing was a trap for Ron. Ron ran to Marcy and grabbed her shoulders. Marcy, tell me, it's not true, is it? He begged. He couldn't believe that Marcy would betray him like that. He treated her so well, and they had always gotten along with each other, never arguing or fighting. This seemingly came out of nowhere, so it was hard for him to accept it. Marcy pushed Ron away and stepped backward. She didn't look guilty at all, and instead, she glared at him coldly. Yes, it's true. 
Ron, you're very nice to me. I know that, but you can't give me what I want. So we're over, she blurted. What do you want? Ron asked, confused and deflated. I told you that my dream is to become an actress, but you said that I should stay in school. I won't give up my dream because of you. Tyrone doesn't mind if I drop out and pursue an acting career, and his uncle is a director. He can help me, said Marcy. Clara butted in. You're a shameless, terrible person, and you can never become an actress. I'll expose what you did, and no one will hire you, she threatened. Marcy glared at Clara, but she felt a little worried. If her dirty secret was exposed, her reputation would be ruined. Do you think the public will believe whatever you say? I can tell them that it was Ron who cheated on Marcy first, retorted Tyrone. His threat was real, because nobody would believe it without solid proof. If you try to make it in the entertainment industry, you'll have me as a competitor, Clara hissed. Now that I know that you sleep with men who can help your career, I can easily get the goods on you. Marcy was furious because of Clara's threats. Ron, how can you allow them to humiliate me like this? She blamed him. Ron coldly stared at Marcy in silence. He didn't think that Clara had said anything wrong. Even though he was heartbroken, Marcy had betrayed him and their relationship was over. He would never defend her actions. He had treated her well and had never forced her to do anything she didn't want to do. But she was with Tyrone behind his back. Upon thinking of that, he felt disgusted. Marcy was anxious when she realized that Ron wasn't defending her. Come on, Ron, she pleaded. Ariana let out a laugh. You're delusional, you know that? You cheated on him. How can you expect him to defend you? She scoffed. She felt deeply sorry for Ron because she knew that he had trusted Marcy. If Marcy didn't like him any longer, she could have broken things off without hurting him, but she chose to betray him. Rachel, go back to the car with Ron. I need to talk about something serious with them, Ariana said, giving the car key to Rachel. They were going to have a fight, and Rachel wasn't a strong fighter. To make sure that she wasn't hurt, Ariana wanted her to wait in the car. As for Ron, it wouldn't be easy for him to watch Marcy being beaten up, even though she betrayed him. Therefore, Ariana thought it would be better if he left as well. She knew that the situation wouldn't end easily, but she wasn't afraid of Tyrone and his friends. She was very mad at how they hurt Ron, so she had to do something. She would also warn them to stay away from Ron in the future. If they wouldn't listen, she wouldn't hesitate to punish them. Rachel nodded and took the car key from Ariana. An expression of realization dawned on Ron's face. Ariana, are you... His voice trailed off. You called me for help today, so you should listen to me now. Leave with Rachel, and I'll handle the rest. Ariana instructed him sternly. Rachel then pulled Ron out the door, although he was hesitant to leave. Tyrone saw what Ariana wanted to do, and he scoffed. What, do you want to fight? Do you think we're scared of you? He gave the nod to his friends, who also got ready to fight. Ariana cleared her throat and announced, I'll only beat up Tyrone and Marcy. If any of you don't want to be hurt because of them, stand aside. Otherwise, you can't blame us if anything bad happens to you. She was trying to be kind by giving Tyrone's friends a chance to stay out of trouble. Bring it on, princess, one of Tyrone's friends shouted. His other friends all roared in agreement. They came to support Tyrone tonight, so they wouldn't retreat. How about you two? Ariana asked Marcy's two female friends. They didn't look scared at all, and one of them scoffed. I doubt you could do anything to hurt us. This wasn't the first time that they had been in a fight. Besides, they had more people on their team than Ariana did, so they didn't think that they would lose. Great, you asked for it, said Ariana. Since they refused to move aside, she wouldn't hesitate to teach them a lesson. She then raised her voice and yelled, Beat them! Ariana's friends couldn't wait any longer, so they rushed ahead to fight against Tyrone and the others. Ariana dashed straight to Marcy. She lifted her up by grabbing the collar of her shirt, then slapped her face with her other hand. She hissed, Ron has been dragged into trouble ever since you became his girlfriend. He was almost hit by a car once because of you. If you don't like him, you could have just told him. How dare you sleep with another guy behind his back? Marcy wailed in pain. Although Ariana's slap wouldn't cause any damage to her face, besides swelling and a bruise, it stung painfully. 
Because Clara and the others were good at fighting, each of them could beat several people up. Therefore, it was easy for them to beat Tyrone and his friends up within just a few minutes. Harry and the boys didn't want to beat up any girls, so Clara beat Marcy's two friends by herself, which wasn't difficult at all. It was a soundproof room, so nobody could hear what they were doing inside. When Ariana thought they had done enough fighting, she shouted to her friends, All right, we can stop now. Although they would have gladly kept fighting if they could, they obeyed Ariana's order. Tyrone, Marcy, and their friends all had swollen faces and black eyes, but they weren't seriously injured. Ariana announced, I think we've made our point clearly now. If you dare to take revenge and hurt Ron, you'll be punished even more severely next time. But if you want to challenge me directly, do it whenever you want. You can simply let Ron know. He knows how to find me. She didn't want to tell them her identity, so she told them to find her through Ron. Do you hear me? Ariana asked Tyrone, and he trembled in fear. He was reluctant to give in, but he knew that he was no match for Ariana. Yes, he stammered. If he didn't give in, he and his friends would be beaten again. Great, let's go now, stated Ariana, and turned around to leave. She actually didn't care about Tyrone's answer, because she knew he might change his mind at any second. However, that didn't matter, because no matter what Tyrone would do in the future, she had confidence she could pay him back. Once Ariana was gone, Tyrone swore and kicked a chair over in anger. One of his friends was mad too, and he asked, should we hire some thugs to beat them up? It was obvious that he didn't take Ariana's threat seriously, and what had happened to them today made him feel humiliated. Yeah, I know some gangsters, and they can help us, Tyrone's other friend added. Are you kidding me? Didn't you see how violent they are? They're obviously better at fighting than us or anyone we could hire, Tyrone snapped. He wasn't an idiot, and he knew that he shouldn't mess with Ariana and her friends again. Not even professional thugs could hurt them. Tyrone's friends agreed that he had a point. Do we have to accept defeat then? Someone asked. Let's just get to the hospital now. We can talk about it after we've made a full recovery, said Tyrone. He didn't want to lay down and accept defeat either, but there was nothing they could do to get revenge right now. He decided to think about it in the future. His friend called an ambulance at once. Marcy felt aggrieved when she heard that Tyrone wanted to give up. She wanted to teach Ariana and her friends a lesson for what they did to her. However, she didn't have the ability to fight against them by herself and could only rely on Tyrone to take revenge for her. Tyrone's family was rich after all, so she believed that it would be very easy for him to get revenge on Ariana. She believed in the power of money. In addition, she also wanted to teach Ron a lesson because he stood aside and let her get beat up by his cousin. Although she had cheated on him, he shouldn't be so cold-blooded. Marcy was so selfish that she didn't realize that she had called Ron to help her tonight, and he came right away, even though it turned out to be a trap. He didn't owe her anything more once he found out the truth about her cheating on him. Marcy let out a whine, trying to get sympathy from Tyrone. However, when he turned to look at her, he felt nothing but disgust. Her cheeks were bruised and swollen, and she didn't seem so beautiful anymore. Tyrone blamed her for the fact that he and his friends got hurt, so he snapped at her. This is all your fault. If it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't have been beaten up like that. Get out of here now. I don't want to see you again. Just like that, he abandoned Marcy. The truth was, he never liked her much. He simply wanted to sleep with her because she was beautiful. His family was rich after all, so he would never marry a girl from an ordinary family. Besides, it was clear that Marcy would sell everything for money and fame. Therefore, who knew when she wouldn't cheat on him for a more powerful man? Tyrone wasn't an idiot. He was just a shameless man. He indulged himself in playing around with women, but wouldn't accept a woman who did the same thing as him. He had a double standard, but he never thought he was wrong. Marcy's jaw dropped open in shock when Tyrone told her to leave. But, Tyrone, I... She stammered. If Tyrone abandoned her, she would lose everything. However, she didn't dare to criticize him because she was hoping that he would change his mind. Marcy, do you honestly think you mean anything to me? Let me be honest with you. I only wanted to sleep with you. I would never seriously date a girl from a family as poor as yours. 
Besides, you're selfish, snobbish, and cheap, and you cheated on Ron by being with me, so I know you'd cheat on me in the future too, Tyrone spat at her. Marcy was frozen in shock when she heard Tyrone's vicious criticism of her. She didn't know how to argue against him because the truth was, every word he said was true. After all, she had cheated on Ron, who was much kinder and better looking than Tyrone. Therefore, if she met a better man than Tyrone in the future, which wouldn't be hard, she definitely would leave him. Don't bother saying anything, I'm not an idiot, and I know what you're thinking in your mind, Tyrone continued. Marcy continued to stand there in silent shock, so Tyrone snapped at her impatiently. Disappear, now! She suddenly burst into tears. She bit her lip and stared at Tyrone with a pitiful expression, but she only saw his look with disdain. That's when she knew she had to leave, because he had no mercy for her. The other two girls, who were Marcy's friends, had to leave with her as well. The three girls left with swollen faces. Luckily, there was a back door to the bar, and they could cover their faces with their bags, since they were embarrassed for others to see them. Tyrone and his friends left the same way as Marcy, furious and humiliated, and eager to leave the night behind them. When Ariana and her friends got back to the car, Ron asked her what she had done to Tyrone and the others, even though he already suspected the answer. I beat them all up, Ariana replied simply. Although she hadn't allowed Ron to watch the scene unfold, she didn't refuse to tell him what exactly had happened. Even if she didn't tell him, he would find out sooner or later. All of them, stammered Ron. He wanted to know whether Marcy was included. Yep, replied Ariana. Although Ron wasn't surprised to hear it, he still had mixed emotions, because he had loved Marcy up until tonight. What, do you still have feelings for her? Ariana asked. She understood that Ron had loved Marcy, but she didn't think that she deserved his love. No, of course not, Ron denied, hearing the dissatisfaction in Ariana's voice. Even though he had a little sympathy for Marcy, she had made her choice. She had chosen to cheat on him, so there was no need for him to show any mercy toward her. The truth was, if Ariana hadn't helped him today, he honestly didn't know what would have happened to him, because Marcy had already betrayed him. He might really have challenged Tyrone for no reason and wound up in big trouble. Without Ariana's help, he would have had to face him alone. He had friends in their university, but none of them dared to stand up to Tyrone. He alone definitely couldn't have defeated him, so he would have lost Marcy to Tyrone and then blamed himself for it for the rest of his life. He turned to Ariana for help because he was left with no choice at that time. Luckily, she gave him a helping hand. Well, Marcy doesn't deserve you, Ariana assured him. She wouldn't try to force Ron to forget about her right away because she knew it took time. She only hoped that Ron could completely give her up even if she tried to win him back in the future. I know, admitted Ron. It would be hard for him to get over Marcy right away, but he was determined to forget about her as soon as he could. If any of those creeps dare to cause you trouble again, or if they want to find me through you, just call me, Ariana instructed him. I will, promised Ron. He knew that Ariana was the only one who could help him in situations like this. Because of that, he was very grateful to her. He added... By the way, thank you so much for what you've done tonight. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have found out the truth about Marcy. Let me take you guys out for a treat. Although he wasn't in a good mood now, he still wanted to thank Ariana and her friends. No need, we're not hungry right now, but we can get dinner together some other time, offered Ariana. She understood that Ron didn't have an appetite now, so she wouldn't force him to eat. Besides, it was getting late. All right, deal, Ron said grateful that Ariana understood his feelings. After that, she drove Ron back to his university, then took Harry and the other boys back to the hotel. On their way, Harry jokingly complained that he hadn't enjoyed himself tonight during the fight, because Tyrone was no match for him at all. When Ariana dropped the boys off at the hotel, it was nearly 11 to 11.30 p.m. Henry called Ariana at that time, but she was still driving, she briefly told him that she had gone to deal with something tonight and was still on the road now. Henry reminded her to be careful, then told her to call him back when she was home. 
Even though Henry and Ava already accepted each other, they just met, and Henry wasn't particularly talkative, so it was a little awkward when they were alone with one another. Therefore, they went to their own rooms once they were home. Ariana drove back to Aspenhaven after that, and it was almost midnight by the time they arrived, so she didn't chat with Clara and Rachel anymore. They each took a shower and went straight to bed. They still needed to get up early the next morning after all. After climbing into bed, Ariana called Henry, and they talked with each other for about 20 minutes. Henry told her that he and Ava would go visit the Ortiz family again tomorrow. After hanging up the call with Henry, Ariana thought about taking out the jade with the dragon phoenix cloud pattern, but she hesitated to do so, because she was afraid that something strange might happen that would affect what she planned to do tomorrow. As a result, she decided to leave it in her telepathic eye space for the time being. She would go visit Ezekiel tomorrow and take it out then. With Ezekiel's help, she would be safe, even if something strange happened. That night, Ava didn't fall asleep until it was very late, because she kept thinking about what she had successfully remembered and what she hadn't. She ached to get her memories back, but they still eluded her, and she would get a headache every time she thought too much about the past. She continued having strange dreams, which were intermittent and incomplete, but this time she was able to remember them after she woke up. Ariana and the other girls got up at 6 o'clock a.m. and went on a run together. After the run, they planned to practice their fighting skills against each other. Clara had a habit of exercising every day, so she was in great shape, which was helpful for her progress in martial arts. Although Rachel was the weakest one among them, she was still strong compared to ordinary people. She alone could defeat five men at least, and could protect herself well in dangerous situations. However, she still wanted to improve her fighting skills, in case there came a need for them one day. After all, one could never be too careful. When they were running in the morning, they saw Logan and Evelyn running in the distance. The four swift siblings also exercised every morning, so Ariana would often cross paths with them. Wow, that man in the distance has a very good build. I wonder if his face is as good looking as his body, said Clara. Oh, he's very handsome. Do you want to meet him? Ariana joked. Logan was indeed unusually handsome, and Ariana wouldn't lie about that. However, Henry was still the most good looking man in her eyes. Even though there were other handsome men out there, she didn't pay much attention to them. Really? Clara asked, her eyes lighting up at once in interest. Have you seen him before? She added. I've seen him around, usually when he runs in the morning, Ariana replied casually. Um, there's a girl with him, Clara pointed out. She's his younger sister, Ariana revealed. Say no more, Clara exclaimed, then sped ahead to strike up a conversation with Logan. Ariana thought Clara was joking. She laughed and pulled her friend back. Are you serious, she said. Why not, Clara asked. She simply wanted to strike up a conversation with the man. There was nothing wrong with that. Her face suddenly fell and she said, Did you just lie to me? Is he actually ugly? No, I didn't, Ariana stated, rolling her eyes. But don't you feel embarrassed? She teased her. Why? I just want to make a new friend. Why should I feel embarrassed? Clara pointed out. Can we not meet a hot man right now? Asked Rachel. She also thought it was embarrassing if Clara went to strike up a conversation with a stranger. After all, they were sweaty from their run and hadn't even put on makeup yet. Ariana butted in. All right, that man and his sister are actually my friends. I'll introduce you, she said. What? You're friends with them? Why did you joke with me just then? Clara complained. Ariana laughed, then ran ahead to greet Logan and Evelyn when they were near. Morning, guys, she called out. When Logan and Evelyn heard Ariana's voice, they turned around at once. They looked happy to see her, and Logan called out, Hi, Ariana, what a coincidence. When he turned around, Clara saw his face, and her jaw nearly dropped to the ground. Not only did this man have a strong, muscular build, but he also had a gorgeous face, too. It wasn't often that Clara saw a man like that. Are these your friends? Logan asked, glancing at Clara and Rachel. Hi, I'm Ariana's friend, Clara. Nice to meet you, said Clara at once. She reached out her hand to shake hands with Logan. She obviously wasn't a shy girl, and she had a weakness for handsome men. 
She had met many decently good-looking men before, but she only considered a few of them handsome. Nice to meet you. My name is Logan, Logan replied, taking Clara's hand and shaking it, although he already noticed the admiration shining in her eyes. Logan had countless admirers, so he was used to women's reactions when they saw him. Moreover, although Clara wasn't bothering to hide her attraction towards him, she didn't have any dirty ideas, so he wasn't put off by her. Plus, she was Ariana's friend, so he subconsciously assumed she was a good person. The second Clara's hand touched Logan's, she felt as if an electric shock went through her body, and she had to force herself not to squeal. This is my other good friend, Rachel, Ariana said, gesturing to Rachel, who was too shy to introduce herself. Nice to meet you, Rachel greeted them. Nice to meet you too, Logan replied. My name is Evelyn, by the way, said Evelyn, waving and smiling at Clara and Rachel. After the introductions, they ran together and chatted with each other along the way. The new semester is starting in a few days. Are you going to be starting classes right away, Ariana? Evelyn asked. I don't know yet. I'll have to see, Ariana replied. She actually hadn't had the chance to enroll in classes yet. It was different for her because she was a busy businesswoman. Plus, she planned to accompany Clara and Rachel to their universities and help them get settled in their new apartments before focusing on her own enrollment. Even if she couldn't accompany them, she would arrange for someone to do it for her. Evelyn nodded and didn't say anything else. Since both she and Ariana would be attending UCLA, she hoped that they could go to classes and events together, but she wouldn't force her to go to anything with her. She still wanted to be friends with Ariana for a certain purpose, but also didn't want to push things. If she and Logan didn't have patience, the real purpose behind their friendship with Ariana would be exposed. Although they still hadn't found out anything useful from her, they needed to be careful and patient for their plan to work. All they needed to do now was to maintain a good relationship with her, and they would get whatever they wanted in good time. Even if Ariana didn't offer to help the Forswift family directly, they could stop her from helping other dominant families in the world of immortals. After running for a while, Rachel was out of strength, so Ariana stopped too. She still wanted to test Rachel's and Clara's fighting skills later. As Ariana and her friends stopped, Logan and Evelyn stopped too. Are you guys calling it quits? Logan asked. Yeah, you guys can keep on running and we'll rest for a while, Ariana replied. Why don't we have breakfast together later? asked Logan. Clara's eyes lit up again. She would love nothing more than to eat breakfast with such a handsome man. However, she had said nothing and instead looked to Ariana because he was asking for her opinion. Thanks, but I have friends waiting for us to have breakfast together at the hotel they're staying at. Ariana declined. All right, we can do it next time, Logan replied. Sounds good, said Ariana. She had never had any intention to avoid Logan and his younger sister, so she was willing to share a meal with them if she was free. Even though she didn't need them anymore in order to learn more about the world of immortals, because she could do that by asking Ava or Felix, she still kept a good relationship with them. She might need their help when Ava went to get revenge on the Bulbous family in the future. Ariana was the type of person who would make full use of her connections. At the same time, if they wanted something from her in exchange for their help, she wouldn't hesitate to give it to them. After that, Logan and Evelyn ran away, and Clara stared at him with dazed eyes. She didn't stop staring, even when Logan was out of sight. He's already gone. Are you in love now? Ariana joked. Clara snapped back into focus and said, No, I'm not in love. I just think he's unusually handsome. It's rare to see a man as good-looking as him. She wasn't the type to fall in love just because of a man's looks, but good looks never hurt. Still, she enjoyed being single, and she was still young, so she wouldn't obsess about a romantic relationship for the time being. The truth was, Ariana was worried that Clara would get her heart broken if she really was interested in Logan romantically. They came from different worlds after all, and she would be hurt if she obsessed over someone she couldn't have. Evelyn joked with Logan after they ran away. I think the girl named Clara has a little crush on you. Although Evelyn looked like she was 17, she was actually nearly 30 in the world of immortals, so love and romance wasn't anything new to her. She could easily see that Clara had an interest in Logan. 
I have plenty of admirers, and women want to be close to me for all kinds of reasons, Logan replied with a sigh. Although it sounded narcissistic, it was the truth. Logan was too noticeable to be ignored wherever he went. What about Ariana? asked Evelyn. She doesn't seem to have any special feelings towards you. Logan blushed a little and replied, Well, she's special. Ariana was indeed very special, because she looked calm every time she saw him. That was because she was in love with Henry and only had eyes for him. After Ariana and her friends had rested for a while, Ariana began to test Rachel's fighting skills and saw that she had made great progress. Although she spent most of her time at her internship, she never forgot to practice martial arts because she needed to protect herself. Actually, she didn't tell her friends this, but recently, three men had tried to rob her one day when she was off work and heading back home. However, she was able to beat them up because she had greatly improved her physical condition and martial arts skills during the past year. Because she didn't want to worry her friends, and she hadn't gotten hurt from the experience, she didn't tell anyone what happened. Ariana only used a third of her strength when she tested Rachel's fighting skills. It was only a test, and she wasn't trying to defeat her. However, Rachel still couldn't get the upper hand during their friendly competition, because Ariana was at a much higher level than her. They practiced out on the lawn in front of the woods, and there was a path near them. Many people ran by them on the path, and some of them stopped when they noticed what Ariana and her friends were doing. Wow, this girl is quite good. She must have started training in martial arts when she was a little girl, said a woman who was passing by. True, but I don't think girls should be so violent, said the woman's friend. Clara overheard their conversation and was displeased at once. She argued, Violent? I don't think so. Girls nowadays must learn to protect themselves from dangerous men. Haven't you seen news of some creepy men who do terrible things to women? Girls these days must learn to be strong to defend themselves. The women passing by agreed that she had a point. Then they left so that Clara and the others could continue practicing. When Rachel wasn't able to fight back anymore, Ariana stopped and let her rest. At this time, a man who was about 30 years old passed by with his friend. He noticed the girls fighting and said to Ariana, Hey, do you mind if I join you? I'd like to try fighting against you for fun. He was over six feet tall, and he had a strong build, suggesting that he was a talented fighter himself. Ariana thought that he must be a soldier or a policeman from his air of uprightness. It was also possible that he wasn't either of them, and he simply loved martial arts. Why not? Ariana agreed, because she always enjoyed fighting against others. The man's friend blurted out, Really? Samuel, you're a full-grown, strong man, and you want to fight against a young girl? You're taking advantage of her. He believed that Ariana was no match for Samuel. Samuel smiled and said nothing. He knew a lot about martial arts, and he could see that Ariana was stronger than she looked. It wouldn't be easy to take advantage of her. It's fine, Ariana insisted. Even though Samuel was tall and muscular, she didn't think he was better than her at fighting. Since she agreed to fight against Samuel, his friend said nothing further. It wasn't his business after all. After that, Samuel walked towards Ariana, and after bowing to each other, the competition began. Ariana knew that it was impossible for Samuel to beat her, but at the same time, she didn't want to defeat him too quickly. Therefore, she only used about half of her strength. At first, Samuel did the same thing, because he didn't want to hurt Ariana. However, it was quickly apparent that half of his strength wasn't good enough, so he was forced to use greater strength. Unfortunately, as he kept using greater strength, he still failed to get the upper hand on Ariana, which totally shocked him. What was worse, he could tell that she wasn't using her full strength, although he didn't know how much strength she was using. Passers-by, who had gathered to watch, assumed that Samuel and Ariana were at the same level, and Samuel deliberately wasn't using his full strength in order to let Ariana have an advantage. Many of them were familiar with Samuel and his fighting skills, so they believed that he was better than Ariana. However, they were still impressed by her ability, because she was a young and thin woman, but she was clearly much stronger than they assumed. Samuel finally used all of his strength, but he still couldn't defeat Ariana, because she also increased her strength at the same time. 
he finally realized that he couldn't beat Ariana, even if he used his full strength. He didn't feel embarrassed, however. Instead, he was amazed by Ariana's ability, and he enjoyed the competition with her. Therefore, he didn't quit the competition early in order to save face, but he inwardly encouraged himself to do his best. Ariana, to be kind, wouldn't let Samuel be humiliated and simply decided it would be a tie. Samuel would stop when he was out of strength. Indeed, after a few minutes, he called the end of the competition when he was too tired to go on. Wow, I have to admit that you beat me there. You're really incredible, praised Samuel. He didn't feel unhappy after he lost the game. He knew from the beginning that Ariana was very extraordinary, but he was still surprised by her talent. However, when other people heard Samuel admit that Ariana beat him, they rounded their eyes in shock and couldn't believe it. What? You lost? His friend exclaimed. No way. This girl is unbelievable. She beat Deputy Director Sloan, someone else called out. I'm flattered, replied Ariana politely. Although it was obvious that he was no match for her, she was polite and respectful. When she heard someone call Samuel a deputy director, she realized that he might be a deputy director of a government department. In that case, he must have high social status. It made sense, because those who lived in Aspen Haven were either rich or powerful. After all, a single house here cost at least a million dollars. An ordinary person couldn't afford a house here. "'May I ask your name?' asked Samuel. "'My name's Ariana Young,' Ariana replied. "'You seem to be a student, right?' Samuel remarked. "'Yeah, I'm 19 years old. I just graduated high school, actually, and I'll start college in a few days,' Ariana replied. Ariana went to school later than her peers, so she was already 19 after graduating high school, although some of her friends were still 18.' Her birthday was in May, but she didn't celebrate her 19th birthday, because she just forgot about it this year. She didn't remember it until Clara and her other friends asked her about her birthday, but it had already passed. Clara offered to make it up to her, but Ariana was busy then, so they decided to have an extra fun party next year. "'Are you going to study in a police academy? You're very good at fighting,' Samuel complimented her. Ariana was extraordinarily stronger than other young women— and Samuel would love to hire her if she wanted to be a policewoman. Ariana understood what Samuel was thinking about, so she shook her head and replied, No, actually, I'll major in business administration at UCLA. Samuel looked impressed. UCLA? You must be an excellent student. Is your family involved in business? He asked. He assumed that Ariana's family must have their own business and that she was going to inherit the company. Yes, Ariana answered simply. Samuel nodded in understanding. He respected her choice to go into business, and he realized it was probably because of her family background that she learned martial arts to protect herself. So, do you always practice here in the morning? asked Samuel. Not every day, replied Ariana. Well, if we happen to meet again, I'd love to practice fighting with you, Samuel said with a bow. He hadn't enjoyed a fight for a long time. Although he was a member of a SWAT team and all the other members of his team were strong and talented, not many were comparable to him. It wasn't easy for him to meet a great match, and he wanted to seize this chance to practice his skills. Why not? If we see each other again, I'm more than willing to fight with you, answered Ariana. It was good for her to practice too. Samuel smiled and said, By the way, I'm Samuel Sloan. Please call me Samuel. Sure, Samuel, Ariana replied. After that, he left, but he didn't ask Ariana for her phone number. This was their first meeting, and he thought it was inappropriate to do that right now. Since she already agreed to practice fighting with him if they met again, they would have each other's numbers once they got to know each other better. If it was possible, he would love to make friends with her. Because Ariana had an impromptu competition with Samuel, they were running late, so she decided to practice fighting with Clara another time. After showering and changing their clothes, they left for the Regalo Hotel. It was already 7.30 a.m. when they arrived there, so they quickly joined the boys for breakfast, finishing within 10 minutes, and then headed to Big City Studios. Although it was rush hour at this time, Ariana drove quickly and managed to avoid most of the traffic. 
However, it still took them nearly an hour to arrive at the studio. At 8.30 a.m., they pulled up to the lot. Today, the crew would be shooting scenes that took place on a city street. Harry and Lynn would play passers-by in the scenes. For Ariana's sake, Hamish arranged for her friends to say several lines in the scene. They would be local citizens in the show, and they would compliment the lead character. Normally, it was very difficult for extras to get a chance to say lines, so this was exciting. Clara's part was even more important than Harry's and Lynn's. She would be a senior official's daughter. She would argue with other ladies in the group of people who were welcoming the lead character. When they arrived at Big City Studios, all the actors were almost finished with their hair and makeup. Hamish had told them to arrive before 9 o'clock a.m. because they would start filming at 10 o'clock a.m. and they needed time to put on makeup and get ready. He himself had been at the set since 7 o'clock a.m. that morning and was already busy working. The main characters needed to look perfect, so it took a long time for the makeup artists to finish their makeup. Once they heard that Ariana had arrived on the set, they walked out of the dressing room, ready with their hair, makeup, and costumes for the show. Clara didn't have any favorite celebrities in the entertainment industry, but she had a good impression of Bella Flores and Timothy Colombo, the leading actress and actor in the show. Therefore, when she saw them, she eagerly ran to greet them and asked if she could take a photo with them. Harry and Lynn also approached them and politely greeted them. Although they were just playing extras today, nobody dared to disrespect them because they were Ariana's friends. Of course, Ariana's friends didn't think that they were superior to other people because of their relationship with Ariana. Instead, they were very polite to Bella and Timothy. As a result, they got along quite well with each other. After taking photos together, Ariana's friends went to get their makeup and costumes on. They weren't treated differently, and they waited in line like every other extra. However, even though they weren't accorded any special treatment, some extras were still jealous of them because they were Ariana's friends. And because they were Ariana's friends, those jealous people believed that they were treated differently. It was true that they indeed got to be extras because of their relationship with Ariana, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Luckily, only a few people were dissatisfied with the situation, and most extras were simply envious of them because they had connections in high places. Besides, most people also believed that Ariana's friends came here only for fun. If they really wanted to join the entertainment industry through their connections, they would choose to be more than simple extras. When Harry and Ariana's other friends were waiting in line for their costumes, some people struck up a conversation with them. It turned out that they really came here just for fun, and they didn't care about being rich or famous. Because they were very friendly and down-to-earth, they left a good impression on the other actors and extras. There were many extras, so it took a long time for them all to get into their makeup and costumes. After that, they were told what they should do and where they should stand during the scene. The extras weren't as important as the main actors, but they had to take it seriously too. The filming didn't begin until they practiced it once. In the scene, the gates of the Imperial City were opened, and the Emperor came out to welcome the Imperial Concubine, who had come back from battle victorious. The Imperial Concubine was a general, and although she was a brave and noble woman, she didn't have an honorable title. Still, the Emperor didn't have a wife, and he loved his concubine immensely, although the rules of the Empire forbade him from making his concubine his wife. Although he was a powerful emperor, he couldn't do whatever he wanted and had to take into account his courtier's opinions. In the story, the emperor already made up his mind to abdicate his position to his younger brother after the imperial concubine came back victorious. He would then travel around the world with his beloved woman. Although the scene was relatively short, it took all morning to film. Filming consumed a lot of time and energy because they had to shoot the scene many times in order to get the best angles. Among the extras, Clara and Ariana's other friends gave great performances, especially Clara. She was now an even better actress than the time she played a role in Infinite Horror. After all, that had been Clara's first experience in front of the camera, so she wasn't very skilled back then. From that experience, however, she learned a lot, so she made a lot of progress within a short time. 
It's only been a few months since I last saw you act, but you've made great progress, Hamish complimented Clara. Although she wasn't very professionally trained, she had a natural talent and great potential. As long as she continued to practice, she would get even better. Several extras were jealous of Clara when they heard the director complimenting her. It seemed that they had already worked with each other before, only a few months ago. They had heard of what Hamish had been through, and everyone knew that he had been shut out of the film industry for years, until he directed Infinite Horror several months ago, so it was likely that Clara had also been in that movie. Some extras had watched Infinite Horror, but they hadn't paid much attention to the unimportant roles, so they didn't think Clara looked familiar. They decided to watch the film again to see whether they could find her. Thank you so much for your compliment, Mr. McClintock. I'll keep on learning and improving myself, Clara replied happily. Well, I believe you can become an excellent actress if you continue to work at it, Hamish told her. Actually, Clara never cared about other people's opinions about her because other people wouldn't affect her own life. She only had to rely on herself to be happy. However, she cared about professionals' opinions about her acting because she wanted to become a good actress. She cared about their opinions because they were the only people who could affect her career. When it came to outsiders' opinions, however, she couldn't care less. After finishing the scenes in the morning, Ariana and her friends went to have lunch and enjoyed taking a break with the rest of the cast and crew. They came to the set to have fun, so they didn't leave right after finishing their scenes in the morning. Hamish said they could still be extras in the following scenes, and all they needed to do was to change their clothes. Normally, an extra could play a passerby in many scenes, because the audience wouldn't see his or her face anyway. Filming was never done in the order of the story of the script, because it was more efficient to film based on the sets that were available. In other words, all the scenes that happened on this street would be shot together, regardless of when the scenes appeared in the storyline. That saved the production team both time and money. Besides, all videos needed editing, so the shooting sequence wasn't important. After lunch, everyone rested for half an hour before they changed their clothes. At 6 o'clock p.m., the filming was over for the day, so Ariana left with her friends. They didn't stay to share dinner with Hamish and the other members of the crew because they had other plans. At this time, the members of the Ortiz family were about to enjoy dinner together. Serena came back from the hospital in the evening because she needed to take a break after taking care of Carlotta for so long. She had been working at her job, plus taking care of Carlotta every day for weeks. Carlotta was in stable condition now. Although her ribs were still painful, the pain was tolerable now, and she could sleep well. However, she looked quite haggard after being sick for so long, so she needed more time to recover. Serena hadn't heard anything about Ava yet because the other members of the Ortiz family didn't tell her. After all, Master Ortiz told them not to. As a result, when Serena entered the living room and saw Ava sitting there, she let out a yelp and screamed, Who are you? Even though the woman in the living room looked the same as Henry's mother, she had been dead for years, so it couldn't be her. Serena, this is Ava, said Christina. Ava? No way. Isn't she already dead? How is this possible? Serena exclaimed. Ava isn't dead. This woman is Ava. Master Ortiz raised his voice at her. He was annoyed that Serena was acting so rudely. Since she isn't dead, why didn't she come to see us over the past 15 years? Why is she suddenly back now? How do we know she's not a fake Ava? Serena demanded. Deep down, she knew that this woman must really be Ava, since Master Ortiz accepted her and allowed her to join the Ortiz family. But she couldn't accept it. She never liked Ava after all. Besides, Ava was a very powerful woman, and she would definitely support Henry now that she was back, which would be a big threat to her family and her son. Really, Serena was silly to think of Henry as a threat, because he already owned more than what the Ortiz family had. In addition to the innovation group, Henry also made a fortune as the team leader of the Red Flame. They risked their lives to fulfill every mission, so their salaries were very high. Moreover, they could take half of the property they confiscated as their own. Almost every drug lord and major criminal had hundreds of millions of dollars in assets, 
and the members of the Red Flame could take a percentage of their wealth once they caught them. Of course, that particular perk of the job wasn't known to the outside world, because it was highly confidential. Ava didn't come back during the past few years because she lost her memories 15 years ago. Ariana found Ava, and we were able to find out that she's still alive, explained Master Ortiz, trying to stop Serena from continuing to question Ava. She lost her memories? Oh, that's convenient. I can't believe this. Someone might be tricking us, Serena whined. She was talking about Ariana. In her eyes, Ariana brought bad luck to her family. Because her family had suffered a lot ever since she showed up, and now she made Ava come back. Neither Henry nor Ava was angry at Serena's accusation because they couldn't care less about her. Master Ortiz, however, lost his patience and snapped. Enough! Can't you stop causing trouble every time you come back? Hasn't Carlotta done enough to hurt this family? You better behave yourself or you might lose your position in the Ortiz family. Hearing that, Serena was frightened and closed her mouth at once. She knew that Master Ortiz was talking about what Carlotta had done to Ariana. She had almost forgotten that Master Ortiz found out about that, and she didn't want anyone else to know. Henry would be furious if he knew the truth. Therefore, she subconsciously glanced at Henry to see his reaction. She didn't know whether he would ask about what Carlotta had done. However, Henry had no reaction, which made Serena very relieved. What she didn't know was that Henry already knew about what Carlotta had done, but he chose to listen to Ariana and let it go. Serena was also afraid that Master Ortiz might kick her out of the Ortiz family. She had been married into the Ortiz family for many years, and there was no problem in her relationship with her husband. She didn't want a divorce. However, without the Ortiz family support, her and her family's social status would drop in an instant. It wouldn't be a good result. After that, the Ortiz family began to enjoy dinner together. Ava was treated with great respect and enthusiasm. Serena and Carlos, on the other hand, were ignored, as if they were outsiders. Carlos didn't care about that, because he didn't feel like talking to anyone anyway. Neither did Serena, but she felt quite uncomfortable in such an atmosphere. Christina invited Ava to go shopping with her the next day, while completely ignoring Serena. The two disliked each other and had never shopped together before, so it didn't matter. Ava didn't know how to say no, and she also thought it sounded nice to leave the Ortiz family's house for a while, so she agreed. Henry then took out a black card and gave it to her. With that card, she could buy whatever she wanted, even if it cost millions of dollars. Ava thought it wasn't appropriate to accept such a gift, so she tried to give it back right away. Although Henry was her son, she hadn't gotten her memories of him back yet, so she was unwilling to spend his money. However, the others kept persuading her to accept it, and Henry also insisted. He told her that he prepared the card specifically for her, so Ava took it in the end. Besides, she knew that Henry was very rich, and it wouldn't put much of a dent in his bank account if she spent some of his money. Serena, however, was full of jealousy. She was rich too, but not rich enough that she could buy things that cost millions of dollars whenever she liked. Now, apparently, Ava could. Because of that, Serena lost her appetite and didn't enjoy the meal at all. She made up an excuse and left the dinner table. Other people knew what she was thinking, but nobody cared about her. After she went back to her room, she called her son Leo and told him that Ava was back. Leo was shocked at first, but he was a smart young man and he knew that it must be true if his grandfather already accepted her. Leo remembered his Aunt Ava vaguely. He remembered that she was good at fighting and had achieved a lot in the military along with his Uncle Christopher. She already had the title of lieutenant colonel when she was supposedly killed in the accident. Leo wasn't as angry as Serena was that Ava was back, but he also hoped that she wouldn't change the family dynamic too much. However, he realized that it might be helpful to the Ortiz family that she was back because she could help Henry maintain his influence. Even though Leo was jealous of Henry, because he was better than him at everything, he knew that the Ortiz family needed him. Without Henry, the Ortiz family might not be able to keep their dominant position in the city, because there were many people who tried to scheme against them. 
Therefore, no matter how jealous he was of Henry, he had never taken any action to hurt him. Leo was selfish, but he also knew what was important. After Ariana and her friends left Big World Studios, they went downtown to get some tacos from the food truck street. While they were driving there, they coincidentally passed a familiar face on the street. Candice Rabalkin, who had participated in the same math competition as Ariana earlier in the year. Candice was with another two girls and a boy. They all looked about the same age, but they were arguing angrily. Candice and one of the girls stood together. Candice looked angry, while the girl standing next to her was sad and had tears streaming from her eyes. The other girl and the boy stood facing them. The girl had a pitiful expression, but there was satisfaction hidden in her eyes. She obviously wasn't as kind and weak as she was pretending to be. The boy, however, frowned with impatience. They looked like they were in the middle of a dramatic argument about a romantic relationship. Ariana stopped her car, not far from Candace, and told her friends not to get out right now. She wanted to listen to their argument. Do you know any of those people? asked Michael. He knew that Ariana didn't normally like to watch other people's drama unless it was important. Yes, said Ariana. Which one do you know? asked Clara. The girl wearing white with the high ponytail, Ariana replied. There were two girls in white clothes, but Candace had a high ponytail while the other had short hair. Susie, I can't believe what you've done to us. We treated you as our friend, and we helped you when you needed us. And then you stole Amberly's boyfriend. How could you do that? Candace yelled at the girl, who was standing next to the boy. Ariana was right. Their argument was indeed about a romantic relationship. After what Ron had been through, romantic troubles seemed to have become a common phenomenon in today's society. That girl is so mean. How can she steal her friend's boyfriend? Clara exclaimed. The boy must be a jerk too, added Michael. I want to punch both of them, Harry added too. Michael, don't you dare be like them and abandon Rachel or I'll beat you up, Clara suddenly warned Michael. Michael turned to look at Rachel and made a serious promise. I absolutely won't be like them, he assured her. Their relationship was still new and nobody knew whether it would last forever. Even if things didn't work out between them, one thing was for sure, he would never betray Rachel. Candace, don't be so harsh. I'm grateful for your help, but Benny and I truly love each other. Why can't you understand that? Susie whined, with an exaggerated expression of innocence. She didn't think she had done anything wrong at all. Ariana and her friends thought she sounded ridiculous. This girl named Susie didn't feel ashamed after knowingly stealing her friend's boyfriend. In fact, it sounded as if she felt proud of herself for what she did. Candace raised her voice in greater anger. You're so shameless. Don't you know how disgusting you are? She yelled. At this time, Benny finally spoke up. What do you want us to do? I don't like Amberly any longer, and you can't force me to. I think she should have some dignity and stop annoying me, he snapped impatiently. He looked disdainfully at the girl next to Candace. Amberly was furious when Benny said that about her. If he had broken up with her courteously, she definitely wouldn't continue to annoy him. But the point was that he betrayed her, and she thought that she deserved an explanation. However, he refused to give one to her, and he even insisted that he hadn't done anything wrong. Amberly won't pay more attention to you because a jerk like you doesn't deserve it. But that isn't the point now. Since you don't like her any longer, why don't you make it clear? Why did you have to cheat on her? retorted Candace. She knew that she couldn't force him to like Amberly, but he shouldn't have hurt her like that. Benny argued, Hey, you don't have the right to judge me. For your information, I didn't tell Amberly that I didn't like her anymore because I knew that it would hurt her feelings. Candace laughed at Benny's ridiculous excuse. Did you think it would be easier for her to find out that both her good friend and boyfriend had betrayed her? She retorted. Benny lost patience and yelled, You're really annoying. Since you know the truth now, stop wasting time arguing with me. I've had enough. Then he turned on his heel and started to leave with Susie. Wait for one second, Candace snarled. She grabbed his shoulder, trying to prevent him from leaving like that. However, Benny pushed her hard, and she fell to the ground. Now Ariana knew that she had to do something. She got out of her car and walked towards them, and Clara and the others followed her. Meanwhile, Amberly was scared and went to help Candace get back to her feet. 
but Ariana got to her first. When Candace saw Ariana, she couldn't believe her eyes. A am I in a dream? She stammered. She fixed her eyes on Ariana and felt it was so unreal. When Amberly saw Candace's reaction, she got curious and sized up Ariana. She somehow felt that she looked very familiar, but couldn't remember who she was. After realizing that she wasn't in a dream, Candace shouted excitedly, Oh, this is real! She finally saw Ariana again! Benny was worried that Candace might be injured when she fell, but once he saw that she was fine, he didn't stay. When no one paid attention to him, he turned around to run away. However, Ariana opened her mouth before he could escape. Stop them, she ordered. Clara and the others stopped Benny and Susie at once. What do you want from us? Benny asked, his voice trembling slightly in fear. Many people were standing in front of him, and he certainly couldn't win the fight if they started one. Ariana ignored Benny and asked Candace, What would you like to do to them? She wanted to help Candace, but she would also let her make the decision. I want to beat this shameless couple up, but I can't do it myself. Can you help me? asked Candace. She refused to let them get away with it. Amberly had met Benny because of her, so she blamed herself for what Benny had done. Of course we'll help, replied Ariana. Candace, Benny moaned, trying to protest. Candace, we're family. How can you let them beat me up? You're not my relative. You're Roberta's cousin, not mine, said Candace with disdain. Roberta was Candace's friend, and Benny was Roberta's cousin. Candace and Roberta were close, so she used to consider Benny her own cousin. That was when she thought that he was a good, honest person. It turned out that she was wrong about him. If Roberta knew what kind of person her cousin really was, she definitely wouldn't be opposed to teaching him a lesson. Benny looked hopeless as he realized that Candace wouldn't let him get away with what he had done. Goddess Ariana, please help me teach them an unforgettable lesson, said Candace. As you wish, replied Ariana, then gave an order to her friends. Clara, Harry, you two can do it. Make it quick. There was no need for all of them to deal with two people. In fact, any one of them could have beaten both of them up on their own. However, Ariana decided to let Harry deal with Benny and Clara would handle Susie. Clara and Harry couldn't wait for a second longer, and they stepped forward menacingly once Ariana gave the order. Wait, I I'm going to call the police, Benny stammered, moving backward in fear, but there was no way to escape. Benny, I'm scared, Susie whined, hiding herself behind him. Clara and Harry didn't care whether they would call the police. Clara slapped Susie's face, while Harry punched Benny in the stomach, who tried to struggle in vain. Clara and Harry understood that they had to control their strength. They wanted to teach them a lesson, not disable them. Amberly felt sad as she saw Benny get punched. She used to love him deeply, so she couldn't help but have mixed feelings about what was happening. However, she would never forgive him for what he had done to her, so she didn't do anything to stop Harry from punching him. The commotion attracted the attention of other people in the parking lot, and two men walked over. "'What are you doing? How can you bully others like that?' asked one of the men. "'You don't know what happened here, so just stay out of this,' Clara retorted. She continued, "'What if your girlfriend cheated on you with your close friend? Would you stay calm and forgive them?' The two men didn't know how to respond to that. They knew deep down that they definitely couldn't stay calm if they were in that situation, so they understood what Ariana and her friends were doing now. In the end, the man only warned them, "'Well, don't beat them too heavily. It won't do you any good if their injuries become serious.' Then the two men walked away. Benny was furious. He thought that someone was finally going to rescue them, but they didn't take his side in the end. He still didn't understand why his behavior was so unacceptable, because he was too selfish to reflect on what he had done. After a while, Ariana ordered Clara and Harry to stop. It would be tricky if the fight became too serious, after all. Ariana walked to Benny and turned down her nose at him. If you want to take revenge, feel free to take it up with me personally, but I promise that you'll be very sorry if you dare to hurt Candace and Amberly. Don't ever question my words or my ability, she sneered. Benny remained silent. He indeed was determined to take revenge, but not now. As for Candace and Amberly, he actually didn't dare to hurt them. His parents relied on the Rebalkin family to make money. 
If he hurt Candace, his parents would be affected, and it wouldn't do him any good. Plus, Candace had a close relationship with Amberly, so Benny couldn't hurt her either. After the fight was over, Ariana turned away from Benny and said to Candace, We're going to get some tacos from the food truck now. Do you two want to join us? Even though Amberly was clearly heartbroken and she might not feel like eating, Ariana still invited her to be polite. Of course, said Candace at once. She would never say no to hanging out with her idol, Ariana. Plus, although Amberly was upset, she knew that food would cheer her up. Amberly was a big foodie, and she could always forget her worries when she saw delicious food. What made Candace envious of her was that Amberly never gained weight, no matter how much she ate. I'm down too, but I probably will eat a lot. Is that okay? Amberly warned everyone sheepishly. Ariana could tell that she wanted to drown her sorrows in delicious food, so she just chuckled and replied, As long as you have an appetite, you can eat as much as you want. After that, the group of friends left together. Ariana had thought that Benny might damage her car when they were gone, but she didn't care about it because there were surveillance cameras at the parking lot that would serve as evidence if he was guilty. She wouldn't give up on her night of fun just because he might damage her car. Candace then said, Amberly, let me introduce you. This is Ariana Young, aka Goddess Ariana. As you know, I always talk about her. Amberly's eyes suddenly rounded in shock. No wonder she thought that Ariana looked familiar. It turned out that she was the famous goddess Ariana, the talented young woman on the internet. Candace told her that she had made friends with Ariana at the national math competition, and that someday she hoped that they would all hang out together. She felt so lucky that it was happening today. Hi, goddess Ariana, Amberly greeted excitedly. You can just call me Ariana. We're friends after all, said Ariana with a smile. She didn't think that she was superior to others. When Amberly heard Ariana call her a friend, she felt flattered, but she knew that Ariana was just being nice. She knew it took time to become real friends, and this was the first time they had met each other. Still, she hoped that she could become Ariana's true friend in the future. She already greatly admired her talents and her kindness. Just like that, Amberly temporarily forgot about what Benny had done to her and happily chatted with the others as they walked along the street. Luckily, Amberly was a positive, friendly person, and she wouldn't hold grudges for long. They went to the most popular taco food truck in the area, but because there were so many people there, they needed to wait in line for a while. Right after they took their place in line, more groups of people came, and they felt lucky that they came when they did. If they were a minute later, they would have had to wait for a longer time. After waiting for about 10 minutes, they were able to order their food and sit at an outdoor table. Ariana had generously told everyone that she would pay for the meal today, so they could order whatever they want. Therefore, everyone ordered a lot of food, especially Amberly. While they were eating, they chatted with each other. Candace asked, Ariana, are you going to go to the freshman orientation at UCLA? I'm studying there too, and I'll be there on the first day of orientation. I know we'll have different majors, but I hope we can see each other around on campus. Yeah, I hope so too, Ariana replied. I'll probably miss the first day of orientation because I'm going to take Clara and Rachel to help them get situated at their college. I understand, nodded Candace. She couldn't wait to see Ariana around on campus, but she didn't say that aloud because she didn't want to seem too forward and make Ariana feel uncomfortable. There were eight of them tonight, but they ordered enough food for a dozen people, so they had to eat a lot. Several people sitting at nearby tables paid special attention to them and were impressed by the capacity of their stomachs. However, there were two girls about their age sitting at the next table that talked about them rudely. One of them said loudly, They eat as if they've never seen food before. The other girl laughed boisterously and replied, Maybe they're training for the heavyweight championships. Ariana and her friends were annoyed when they overheard them. Clara argued against them at once. It's none of your business how much we eat. It's not like you're paying for this, she snapped. Although the two girls weren't nice people, they were afraid of trouble, so they closed their mouths when Clara argued against them. Since they stopped badmouthing them, Ariana and the others kept on eating. After a while, Clara asked, Ariana, why don't we go to have some fun later? 
She wanted to enjoy the night, but she knew that Ariana was a busy person. If she had something else to deal with, she wouldn't force her to join them. Where do you want to go? asked Ariana. Luckily, she was free tonight, so she could join them. Candace, you're familiar with LA. Do you know where we can go have some fun? asked Clara. Well, I'm not an expert on the nightlife here, but I've always been interested in one place. However, I've never dared to go there, Candace replied. Where? asked Clara. The haunted house in Hellworld. I heard it's very scary. So scary that people with a weak heart might have a heart attack if they go there. So I've never been brave enough to visit it, admitted Candace. That's a good idea, Harry exclaimed. Ariana, why don't we go to Hellworld? Clara asked Ariana. What do you guys think? Ariana asked the others. I have no problem with that, answered Michael. Rachel and Lynn agreed too. They were a little scared, but they believed that they would be fine if they were with their friends. Since you all want to go there, I'll go too, since I've been wanting to go for a while now. After all, if I chicken out, I can enjoy the other activities there, voiced Candace. Me too, added Amberly. She was scared of it as well, but she didn't want to be left behind. She just inwardly told herself to be brave, and that everything in the haunted house was fake. Great, let's go there now, Clara exclaimed. Since they all agreed to go, it was settled. However, because they ate so much, they rested for a while before they left. They even walked around a bit and took a roundabout route to the parking lot to let their stomachs digest the food. When they were back in the parking lot, Ariana and her friends shared a car, and Candace drove her own car. Candace offered to lead the way, so Ariana drove behind her. Hellworld was part of an amusement park outside of the city center, but it was in its own separate area of the park. The main section of the amusement park was generally open until 6 o'clock p.m., and the cleaning began at 7 o'clock p.m. Hellworld, however, was open until midnight because the atmosphere was more terrifying at night. Brave people who wanted a more exciting adventure would often choose to come after the sun went down. Not only was there a haunted house in Hellworld, but there was also a foggy forest, thrilling mazes, small spook alleys, and more. All of them were frightening and exciting attractions. However, before visitors entered any of the attractions, it was necessary for them to sign a waiver. If any accidents happened due to personal health problems, the amusement park wouldn't take responsibility. People who weren't in good physical condition shouldn't enter the thrilling rides and attractions because they needed to be responsible for their own bodies. Luckily, Ariana and her friends were in good physical condition. Candace and Amberly signed the waiver too, which meant that they didn't have problems either. Even if anything terrible really happened, Ariana would help them, so there was nothing they needed to be worried about. After buying tickets and signing the waiver, they walked straight to the haunted house. However, there were a lot of people who came to the haunted house at this time. In order not to affect the atmosphere of terror, the number of people who went in each time was limited. Groups couldn't exceed 10 people, and the second group of people couldn't enter until the first group of people finished half of the route. There were surveillance cameras in the haunted house, so the staff would know where the visitors went. The haunted house was a building with three floors, with the entrance on the left and the exit on the right. The building appeared to be very shabby, and it gave people an eerie feeling when they looked at it. It was a large building, so it normally took visitors about 20 minutes to walk through it at a normal speed. The light and shadow effects of the ghost in the haunted house were very realistic. There were many doors that visitors needed to open personally, which allowed them to experience the unknown fear in the dark. In addition to mechanical horror effects, there would also be many employees who were dressed up as ghosts or zombies and made small movements in every corner to scare visitors. The level of their makeup could completely match the effect of horror movies. It was so immersive and terrifying that people couldn't stop themselves from being scared, even though they knew it was fake. Therefore, even before entering the door of the haunted house, Candace and Amberly already began to feel nervous and tremble in fear. The others didn't know much about the haunted house, so they had no idea how terrifying it would be. Clara, Harry, Lynn, and Michael were all very excited and only felt a little nervous. Rachel was more nervous than them. She couldn't stop her body from shaking, but she was luckier than Candace and Amberly because she had Michael holding her hand and protecting her. 
As Ariana and her friends stood in line for the haunted house, two groups stood in front of them. One had five people, while the other had six people. Generally, people who came to experience haunted houses didn't dare to come alone or with only one friend. The more people who were in a group, the braver that group would be. The two groups of people who were waiting were all restless with anxiety. Some even wanted to back out, but they had already come this far, so they could only encourage themselves to stay. You guys are all really brave. You don't seem nervous at all, especially Ariana. She's so calm, Candace remarked. I feel a little nervous, but I'm actually more excited, replied Harry. Ariana just shrugged. She had encountered real monsters and ghosts, so she wouldn't be afraid of fake ghosts. Before long, some people came out of the exit of the haunted house. All of them looked pale and couldn't walk steadily. Seeing that, Candace and Amberly were even more nervous, but they still insisted on going inside. A group of people walked in, and another group walked out, and then it was Ariana and her friend's turn. I, I'll follow behind Ariana, Candace said nervously. Then she pulled Amberly to stand with her. Ariana was the bravest out of all of them, so she would feel safe following her. I'll go in front, Clara announced, and ran to the front of their group, because it would be more exciting for her to lead the way. Me too, Harry called out, and he also walked to the front. Therefore, Clara and Harry led the way, followed by Ariana, Candace, and Amberly. Then Michael and Rachel, and Lynn brought up the rear. Once they entered the haunted house, Ariana felt a touch of bad luck in the air. She immediately frowned, because she hadn't expected that. Although this was a haunted house, it was just an entertainment facility, and there shouldn't be really bad luck. Is there a real ghost inside? Ariana wondered. Without hesitation, she used her jade eyes to search around for it. As she glanced around, she only saw fake ghosts. They were either mannequins in sheets or employees in costumes, although the scenes that had been set up were quite horrifying. Even though Ariana had experienced multiple bloody fights in the past, she was still a little disgusted by these frightening scenes. However, she kept her eyes peeled for the real ghost. Because she just walked inside, and the presence of bad luck wasn't strong, it wasn't easy for her to locate it. When they entered the haunted house, the first scene they saw wasn't very scary, so Clara and the others weren't too nervous yet. Candace and Amberly, however, closed their eyes. Oh my, it's scary, exclaimed Candace. We're only at the beginning, but you're already scared. What if you see scarier stuff later, Harry pointed out. I, I don't know, Candace stammered, not wanting to think further about it. Ariana, can you protect me? She asked. Of course, Ariana agreed. Even though these were fake ghosts, there were monsters and ghosts played by staff members who would suddenly jump out and surprise visitors, which was quite startling. If Ariana saw them in advance, she would pull Candace aside to avoid them as much as possible. If they couldn't avoid them, she could do nothing about it then, because she still needed to pay special attention to the existence of bad luck. With Ariana's promise to protect her, Candace felt comforted and less scared. As they went deep into the passage of the haunted house, the surrounding scenery and sound effects became more frightening. Clara and the others started to feel nervous, but they were still more excited than scared. Michael hugged Rachel tightly in his arms, and she felt a little safer and less afraid than Candace and Amberly, but she still felt frightened. Michael actually wasn't as calm as he looked on the surface, but he wanted Rachel to feel safe, so he forced himself to stay calm. After four or five minutes of walking, they came to a turn in the hallway. Suddenly, a ghost fell from the ceiling above. It was only a foot away from Clara and Harry. Clara screamed in fear, and her heart started pounding sharply. Although she wasn't very afraid of the fake monsters and ghosts, she was still startled by the abrupt scare. Harry was also startled, but he didn't scream out. The others were already frightened by the ghosts around them, and they jumped in fear when they heard Clara scream. "'What's wrong?' Candace called out nervously. "'A ghost almost fell onto my head,' replied Clara, her heart still pounding. Candace wanted to look up to the roof to see whether there was a ghost, but she was too scared. Instead, she turned to look to the side, but she accidentally locked eyes with a ghost, which was staring straight at her. She yelped and buried her face in her hands at once. As they continued walking, Candace and Amberly didn't dare to look around. Instead, they focused on Ariana's back most of the time. 
Wherever she went, they followed her. Rachel did the same thing. She seldom looked around and walked with her eyes closed most of the time. Luckily, Michael was hugging her in his arms, so there was no need for her to look ahead of them. Lynn was in better condition than Rachel and the others, but he was still quite nervous. He was at the end of the line after all, and he was afraid that something horrible would suddenly jump out behind his back. As it turned out, his fears were well-founded. After they walked ahead for ten feet, he felt a tap on his shoulder. Lynn almost jumped out of his skin. The next second, he realized that the ghost was fake, so he calmed himself down and turned around to look at it, then continued to walk ahead. The staffer, who was dressed as a ghost, was disappointed that Lynn didn't scream out loud when he touched his shoulder. He had done that many times before, and most of the previous visitors had hollered. All of a sudden, the staffer felt a little frustrated that this group was so difficult to scare. Right at that moment, Ariana found the source of the bad luck, which had become more and more obvious. She had been right, there was indeed a real ghost in the haunted house. It was the ghost of a man, and it was on the upper floor, although it was heading in their direction. It was wearing black clothing, and it had an extremely pale face, which looked quite scary. However, Ariana had seen ghosts many times, so she wasn't afraid of it. The ghost was getting closer to them, and Ariana guessed that it might have noticed that she could sense it. She wasn't worried, however, because she could put it into her telepathic eye space once it touched her, and she would deal with it later when she was alone. As they continued walking along, Candace and some of the others were screaming out loud. Even Clara and Harry were freaking out. They kept jumping at the staff's sudden small movements, although they weren't frightened by the mechanical monsters and ghosts. In addition, many of the rooms were decorated with scenes of blood and gore, which made them feel sick to their stomach. Man, this stuff is disgusting, Clara complained. I've almost had a heart attack multiple times, but you only feel disgusted by the fake blood? You have a very strong heart, Candace complimented her. If you think I have a strong heart, look at Ariana. She's calm all the time and doesn't look scared at all, Clara pointed out. She admired Ariana because of that. It seemed that nothing was scary to her. Actually, although Ariana hadn't seen such bloody and disgusting scenes in real life before, she had seen them in movies. Moreover, she knew they were all fake, so there was nothing to be afraid of. Candace followed behind Ariana, so she couldn't see her expression. After hearing what Clara said, she took a step forward to look at her, and she indeed looked as calm as could be. Candace was impressed and asked, "'Aren't you afraid at all?' "'I'm not afraid, but I also think it's disgusting,' Ariana admitted. "'Wow, you're the one who has the strongest heart here,' Candace exclaimed." When they got to the top of the stairs on the second floor, Ariana finally saw the ghost. It was in the middle of the stairs, looking straight at her with a greedy and excited expression. Ariana could see it, but pretended that she didn't, and walked straight ahead with her friends. Right as she walked past the ghost, the ghost's hand reached for her. It held a black ball of spinning air, which would absorb her energy if the ghost attacked her. However, right when the ghost was about to absorb her energy, it felt its soul being pulled away. Before it could realize what had happened, it was put into Ariana's telepathic eye space. None of Ariana's friends noticed anything abnormal happening, and everyone continued to move forward. The middle section of the haunted house was the most terrifying part, and it even scared Harry and Clara. Ariana also felt startled at times, but wasn't scared. After about 20 minutes, they all made it to the exit. Once they walked outside, Candace let out a sigh of relief and said, Thank goodness, we're finally out. It was torture inside. She was glad it was over, and she felt lucky that she survived. I think I need to sit for a minute, Amberly moaned, looking like she was going to throw up. She sat down on the chair by the door. The others also felt like they needed to recover after going through the haunted house. They sat down together and tried to get their breath back to normal. None of them were seriously affected, so Ariana didn't use her magical power to help them relax. Wow, that was much scarier than I thought, Harry admitted. He had gone to many haunted houses before, but they weren't that scary. Although he knew this one would definitely be scarier than the haunted houses he had been to before, he was still surprised by its degree of horror. Yeah, same, said Clara. Her body was still shaking a little, and she felt like she had to catch her breath as well. 
Amberly, come to my place and sleep over tonight, or I'll be scared of going home alone, requested Candace all of a sudden. She didn't like the idea of staying by herself all night. All right, agreed Amberly. She also didn't want to be alone, with horrifying images of ghosts and monsters in her mind. Do you need us to take you guys home? Ariana asked with concern. Thanks, but don't bother. I'll be fine as long as Amberly sticks with me, said Candace. She didn't want to bother Ariana. Plus, her fears weren't that serious. Even though she was still afraid, there were bright lights along the roads that led to her home, and it was still early, so there was a lot of traffic on the road. All right, Ariana replied. Since Candace didn't need her help, she didn't insist. After resting for a while, they left Hellworld and headed home. What do you want to do tomorrow? Ariana asked her friends on their way back. Harry and the others would be leaving Los Angeles the day after tomorrow, so they only had one more day to enjoy themselves here. Of course, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It would be a shame if we didn't visit the Walk of Fame when we came to Los Angeles, exclaimed Clara. Sounds good, Ariana agreed. After driving the boys back to the Regalo Hotel, Ariana and the girls went to Aspen Haven. It wasn't very late when they got back, only about 11 o'clock p.m. Henry called her at about that time every day, because that was usually when he was free. He would either be in the Ortiz family's house or talking with Ava before that. Ariana went to bed after talking with him for a while. Because it was late, she decided to let the ghost stay in her telepathic eye space for a while. She would deal with it another day when she had more time. The next day, Ariana didn't go running. Instead, she exercised in the yard. Afterward, she tested Clara's fighting skills. Clara was undoubtedly better at martial arts than Rachel because she had received professional training. However, she was still not nearly as good as Ariana. Still, she was able to defeat over 10 ordinary men now. After practicing their fighting, they went to pack up and had breakfast at the Regalo Hotel with Harry, Michael, and Lynn before heading out to see the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That morning, Ava and Henry had breakfast together, after which Ava began to teach Henry some martial arts moves. Although he already had a private teacher, he didn't mind if Ava taught him more skills, because it would only do him good. Henry told Ava that they would meet Ezekiel together, after Ariana's friends finished their sightseeing in Hollywood or wherever she had time. He figured it was time for his mother to meet his private teacher soon. Henry soon got familiar with the moves that Ava taught him, which impressed her quite a bit. She also felt quite proud of him. Since Henry was an immortal now, Ava wanted him to go up in the levels of his cultivation as soon as possible. Therefore, since she had lots of free time these days, she would do whatever she could to help him. Right now, her focus was on martial arts. Because Henry's cultivation was still at a low level, he couldn't learn magic for the time being. A real immortal needed to learn magic and martial arts at the same time, because they could generate more powerful energy by combining the two. Two hours later, Ava and Henry stopped practicing and went to the Ortiz family's house. Serena couldn't sleep at all last night because she was so upset about Ava coming back. Luckily, she went to work in the morning, so Ava didn't see her when she arrived at the Ortiz family's house. Christina normally went to work as well, but she asked for a day off so that she could spend some time with Ava. As for Isabella's family, they had already gone back to Seattle, because Isabella and Mateo had to go back to their jobs. After having lunch at the Ortiz family's house, Christina and Ava went shopping together, while Henry stayed with Master Ortiz at home. They hadn't spent much time with just the two of them for a long time, especially after Henry started dating Ariana, so it was nice to spend time together. Normally, members of the Ortiz family left the house with bodyguards because they were very important and had many enemies who might want to hurt them. However, with Ava by Christina's side, there was no need for them to go out with bodyguards today. Ava was able to defeat dozens of strong men all by herself. Only Henry knew the real reason why Ava was so strong. She was an immortal. The other members of the Ortiz family just thought she had been training in martial arts and military maneuvers for years. Although Ava had Henry's black card, Henry was worried that she still wouldn't feel comfortable using it. Therefore, he told Christina to encourage Ava to buy anything she liked, without caring about the prices. 
Christina took Ava downtown, where there were several large shopping malls, including the Galleria, which was owned by the Flores family. When they entered the Galleria, Christina said to Ava, By the way, did you know that this mall is owned by Ariana's family? What? Really? Ava asked, shocked. She knew that Ariana owned many companies, but she didn't know the Galleria was one of them. Actually, she still didn't know much about Ariana. Ariana wasn't trying to keep her family background a secret from Ava, but she had been busy having fun with her friends for the past few days, so they didn't have much time to talk about things like that. It's owned by Ariana's father, Eve Flores. He's a member of the Flores family, one of the richest families in the country, said Christina. Wait, the Flores family is Ariana's family? Why is her last name Young instead of Flores? asked Ava with confusion. Because Ariana's story wasn't a secret anymore, Christina felt like she could share it with Ava, so she explained. Ariana's last name comes from her mother's side. Her father lost his memories years ago after being injured in an accident, and her mother rescued him and they fell in love afterward. Then, Ariana's father was in another accident and got his memories back, but in the process, he forgot about Ariana's mother. She thought that he was already dead, so she raised Ariana alone. Ariana only met the members of the Flores family earlier this year, after which they finally reunited and accepted each other. Do they treat Ariana well? asked Ava. She was concerned that it would be difficult for them to accept her, because she had spent her whole childhood apart from them. Very well, Christina assured her, feeling happy for Ariana. Ava was relieved. Actually, even if the Flores family treated Ariana badly, at least the Ortiz family would treat her very well. It was quite obvious that Henry, Master Ortiz, and Marco's family liked Ariana very much. In addition, Ava would treat her well too. After all, if it hadn't been for her, she wouldn't have been able to meet Henry. If it weren't for her, Henry might have gone his whole life without knowing his mother. Christina continued, the Flores family wanted to give Ariana some shares of their family business at the party they held to welcome her back home, but Ariana declined. She said that she would fight for what she wanted on her own. She truly is an extraordinary girl, because she became a billionaire within a very short time. That's true, she isn't an ordinary girl, added Ava. By the way, Ariana's mother is five months pregnant. What do you think of that? Christina asked slowly. She was a little bit worried that Ava would think that it was strange, because there would be a 19-year gap between Ariana and her younger sibling. Some people believed that younger children would steal away the older child's property, especially when the older child was a girl and the family valued boys above girls. Ava frowned. That's very nice for them. I just hope that they didn't decide to have a second child because Ariana is a girl, she said. She didn't have a problem with Ariana gaining a younger sibling, only if her parents decided to value the child more if he was a boy. Actually, it was Ariana who persuaded them to have the second child, because she spends most of her time away from them, and she was worried that her parents might feel lonely. If they have another child, they won't be alone, informed Christina. Ava nodded. It sounded like the Flores family treated boys and girls equally, and Ariana truly wanted to have a younger sibling. As they shopped along the street, Christina mentioned, there is a good clothing store coming up. Why don't we go there and take a look at what they have? All right, replied Ava. She had no plans to buy clothes for herself because she already had enough clothing. She simply was shopping to keep Christina company. Wherever Christina wanted to go, she would go with her. Christina, however, was going to do her best to find clothes for Ava and encourage her to buy them. After all, Henry wanted his mother to buy some things for herself, and she didn't want to disappoint him. Once Christina walked inside the store with Ava, the saleswoman welcomed them with great enthusiasm. They recognized Christina as a VIP member of the store. The customers of this store were all rich people, especially the VIP members. Mrs. Ortiz, please try on any pieces you like, said a saleswoman. She understood that Christina didn't like being surrounded by saleswomen when she looked around, so the saleswoman said nothing further after greeting her. She only stood a short distance away from her, waiting to help her at any time. Christina looked around for a while, then picked out a dress and held it up to Ava's body. I think this one would be beautiful on you. Ava, try it on, she insisted. 
I have enough clothes, and I don't think I should buy more, Ava replied, shaking her head. No woman can have enough clothes. Your son told me to help you shop. If you don't spend money on your own, I'll do it for you, and he'll pay the bill, laughed Christina. Ava was amused and didn't know how to respond. It seemed that she had to spend money today, whether she liked it or not. Besides, Christina was right. No woman could have enough clothes. Knowing that she couldn't refuse, Ava went to try on the dress. After a few minutes, she walked out of the dressing room to show Christina, and she amazed everyone. The dress was a dark red cocktail dress with golden patterns. It was sleeveless, and the skirt reached a little above the knee and was bordered with lace. Ava had a very beautiful face, and she also kept in shape, so this dress accentuated her curved body. She was even more gorgeous than a model. A group of saleswomen and customers surrounded her when they saw her. They shouted out compliments. That dress looks amazing on you, complimented a woman. Not only is she beautiful, but she also has an outstanding build, so it looks just perfect on her, added another woman. Wow, I'm jealous now, blurted the first woman. Hearing their compliments, Ava felt a little shy. We'll buy this one, said Christina, not bothering to look at the price tag. However, Ava saw its price when she went to try it on, and it cost $18,000. She thought it was too expensive, so she protested at once. I think we should look at other dresses. This one is too expensive, she insisted. Although it was nothing for Henry, she had never bought such an expensive dress before, so she was reluctant to purchase it. Christina opened her mouth to persuade Ava to buy it. However, before she could say anything, an unkind female voice interrupted her. It only cost $18,000? I think that's a very reasonable price. If you can't afford it, then don't try it on. You're just embarrassing yourself. The woman was about 40 years old, and she had perfectly shaped hair and designer clothes, so it was obvious that she was rich. She looked at Ava and Christina with disdain. She clearly didn't know Christina's identity. Otherwise, she wouldn't dare to make fun of them. Christina's eyebrows narrowed in anger. She was normally very gentle, but that didn't mean that she was weak. In fact, she was quite protective of those she cared about. Therefore, once someone picked on her family members or close friends, she would become aggressive in an instant. However, Ava stopped Christina before she could say anything. She then turned to the woman and said in a cold tone, I only said that this dress is expensive, but I didn't say that I can't afford it. Don't you have any manners? The woman felt humiliated and responded angrily. Since you can afford it, why don't you buy it? It's none of your business whether I buy it or not, replied Ava. If you can't afford it, take it off. I want it, demanded the woman. She didn't actually want the dress, but she wanted to humiliate Ava. The woman's hatred towards Ava was quite strange, because Ava had done nothing to annoy her. The truth was, the woman was being rude to her for a reason. She was jealous of Ava, because she was prettier than her. As a result, when Ava said that the dress was too expensive, she seized the chance to humiliate her. This dress is on my body now, and I have the right to choose if I want it first. If you want it, you'll have to wait until I make the final decision, Ava retorted confidently. Although she was kind and gentle, in front of members of the Ortiz family, there was no need for her to be nice to those who were unkind to her. A saleswoman finally spoke up. This lady is right. Mrs. Prentice, if you want this dress, please wait until she decides to give it up. That was simply a rule in their store. If a customer put on a dress, other customers had to wait until the customer decided not to buy it, before claiming it for themselves. Therefore, even if Mrs. Prentice wanted the dress, she had to wait until Ava put it back on the rack. Mrs. Prentice fumed with anger. She felt humiliated that she was being told to wait for the clothes that were left behind by other people. I don't want any clothing that she has tried on, Mrs. Prentice yelled, completely contradicting what she had said earlier. However, the saleswoman knew it was better to avoid unnecessary trouble, so she didn't bother to waste more time on that argument. Mrs. Prentice finally stormed away and went to look at other clothes. However, it wasn't over yet. Christina told Ava to continue browsing for more clothes because she wanted her to choose outfits that fit her style. After all, different people had different tastes, and Ava might not like the clothes Christina picked out for her. 
Ava decided to buy the dark red cocktail dress after having an argument with Mrs. Prentice, and she thought that would be enough for one day. However, Christina encouraged her to buy more, so she went to look at other clothing. Meanwhile, Mrs. Prentice wouldn't take her eyes off Ava. It was clear that she was unwilling to forget the argument they had earlier. Ava noticed a dress on a mannequin, and she turned to a saleswoman for help, because she wanted to try it on. Excuse me, can I? She started to say. However, before she could finish, Mrs. Prentice's voice sounded again, and she pointed at the same dress and quickly said, I need to try on that dress. Because Mrs. Prentice said it aloud first, the saleswoman was in a bit of a dilemma. It's fine, I can look at other dresses, Ava replied immediately. She didn't want the saleswoman to be put in a difficult position, so she decided to give that dress up. Seeing that she had successfully gotten the dress before Ava, Mrs. Prentice gave her a look of pride. Christina, however, was annoyed, but she kept her mouth shut for now. After that, Mrs. Prentice went to try on the dress. Because she was a pretty woman, the dress looked good on her, but she wasn't nearly as beautiful as Ava. As a result, no one else complimented her when she walked out of the dressing room, except the saleswoman who served her. Meanwhile, Ava tried on another dress that was similar to the one Mrs. Prentice tried on. They were in the same collection, and both were creamy white, but they were slightly different in the shoulders. Ava wasn't trying to overshadow Mrs. Prentice, but she really liked the dress. Everyone was amazed by her beauty once again when she walked out, and it was obvious that she was much more attractive than Mrs. Prentice. She's simply stunning. Every dress looks good on her, one of the saleswomen said. I know, I'm so jealous of her, added another woman. As everyone was complimenting Ava, Mrs. Prentice was annoyed, because she wasn't getting the same treatment. She whirled around to face Ava and demanded, What are you playing at? Why did you put on the same dress as me? Christina lost her patience and blurted out, Don't be ridiculous. My sister-in-law saw the dress you're wearing first, but you grabbed it away. She said nothing about it and let you try it on. Why can't she try on another similar dress? You're so unreasonable. Besides, this store is open to all customers. All the clothes are available to be tried on by any customer. You're acting like you own the place. Mrs. Prentice swallowed stiffly. She knew her behavior wasn't right, so she didn't know how to respond. However, she couldn't let go of her anger, so she finally replied, Well, I may not be the owner of this place, but it's owned by a friend of mine. I can give her a simple call and you'll all be blacklisted. Christina smiled in a mocking way. Great, do it now, she challenged her. Coincidentally, Christina knew the owner of this store too. Her name was Miss Hampshire, and she would never treat her customers badly just because of Mrs. Prentice's unreasonable behavior. On the contrary, if Mrs. Prentice insisted on turning the situation into a serious problem, Mrs. Hampshire might cut off their friendship. Mrs. Prentice, however, didn't hesitate to take out her phone. She wasn't worried about the repercussions, because she believed that Christina couldn't possibly be as influential as her. Therefore, she called the owner of the store at once. Because Christina didn't stop her, neither did the saleswoman in the store. It was obvious that Christina wanted to teach Mrs. Prentice a lesson. However, some people who didn't know Christina's family background were worried about what would happen to her. If the owner of this store really blacklisted her to please Mrs. Prentice, that would be embarrassing, especially because it wasn't Christina's fault. Still, the saleswoman in the store didn't think their boss would do that. Before long, the owner of the store answered Mrs. Prentice's call, and Mrs. Prentice started. Mrs. Hampshire, there are two customers who won't stop stealing away the clothes I've picked out in your store. You must help me with it. Everyone who was listening rolled their eyes at the ridiculous lie. Is that so? Well, I don't want such customers to shop in my store, Miss Hampshire replied. Please hand the phone to the store manager. After that, Mrs. Prentice handed her phone to the store manager, giving her a look of warning. She was threatening the store manager to side with her. The store manager frowned a little because Mrs. Prentice was acting so unreasonable. Hi, boss, said the store manager. What exactly happened? asked Mrs. Hampshire. The store manager was very honest. She answered, Well, a VIP customer named Christina Ortiz and her sister-in-law Ava came to our store today. Ava tried on a lovely cocktail dress, and it looked very good on her, but she thought it was too expensive, so she hesitated to buy it. 
Mrs. Prentice made a disparaging remark, and they had an argument. After that, Mrs. Prentice grabbed away the second dress that Ava liked. Ava didn't make a big deal out of it, and she chose another dress. The two dresses happened to be in the same collection, but Ava looked better than Mrs. Prentice after they both tried on the dresses. Mrs. Prentice was unhappy about it and said that Ava did it on purpose. They had another argument afterward. Mrs. Prentice wouldn't calm down, so she decided to use your influence to blacklist Mrs. Ortiz and Ava. Mrs. Prentice was furious when the store manager told the truth in detail. No, it was she who stole my dress, she protested. The store manager started to lose her patience with Mrs. Prentice. She said slowly, We have all witnessed what happened here, and there are surveillance cameras too. Mrs. Prentice narrowed her eyes angrily. She didn't know how to respond to that, because she knew it was the truth. Mrs. Hampshire changed her mind after hearing the whole story. She chose to believe the store manager, not Mrs. Prentice. Although she knew Mrs. Prentice, they weren't actually great friends. Christina, however, was different, because she was from an influential family, making her much more important than Mrs. Prentice. Tell Mrs. Prentice to apologize to Mrs. Ortiz right now. She must receive Mrs. Ortiz's forgiveness if she wants to shop in our store again, instructed Mrs. Hampshire. After this call, she finally understood what kind of person Mrs. Prentice was. No problem, Miss Hampshire, the store manager said, with a satisfied smile. After that, Miss Hampshire hung up the call, not even bothering to say another word to Mrs. Prentice. The store manager gave the phone back to Mrs. Prentice and told her, Well, my boss said that this whole thing is your fault, and you should apologize to Mrs. Ortiz and get her forgiveness if you want to continue to shop here. Christina smiled smugly, and other people in the store felt satisfied with the result too. It was Mrs. Prentice's fault, after all, so she should apologize to Christina and Ava. However, Mrs. Prentice refused to accept the result. What? I should apologize to them? She repeated in disbelief. She couldn't believe that the owner of the store was requiring her to get Christina's forgiveness, or she wouldn't be allowed to shop here in the future. It was humiliating. Mrs. Prentice, since you're unwilling to apologize, please change your clothes and leave now, said the store manager, speaking as politely as she could, even though she really disliked Mrs. Prentice. Mrs. Prentice fumed in anger and refused to give up. She hissed, Fine, if Miss Hampshire refuses to help me, I can turn to my cousin for help. Her name is Catherine Flores. Ever heard of her? When I tell her what has happened to me here, she'll make sure that your store closes for good. Mrs. Prentice was indeed Catherine's cousin. They had both married into wealthy families by being mistresses who eventually married their lovers. In Mrs. Prentice's case, she married an overweight man who was nearly 20 years older than her. The store manager's face fell when Mrs. Prentice mentioned Catherine Flores. She knew the influence that Hal Flores' family had, and he could make things very difficult for them. She swallowed hard, then said as politely as she could, Mrs. Prentice, I honestly don't know why you would have to make things difficult for us today. We welcome every customer, but you deliberately cause trouble for us. Why are you doing this? Because I'm mad. So what? Mrs. Prentice retorted. She thought that others should cater to her every whim, and she got angry when that didn't happen. At this time, Christina butted in. Fine, you are mad, right? And you have Hal Flores' support, right? Great, turn to him for help, and let's see what will happen. I can protect this store, she assured the store manager. She couldn't stand Mrs. Prentice's behavior anymore. Since Mrs. Prentice wanted to bully other people with her connections, Christina wouldn't hesitate to do the same thing. She had never done it before, but she couldn't submit to the kind of treatment Mrs. Prentice was giving her. Mrs. Prentice looked a little nervous all of a sudden, because it seemed that Christina had some connections too. If Christina was more influential than her, she would be making a terrible mistake by offending her. At this time, Mrs. Prentice started to think carefully about the situation. However, she was still unwilling to give up right now, because that would be embarrassing. In addition, she thought that Christina might just be bluffing. Therefore, in order to save her face, she refused to change her mind. Great, let's wait and see, she replied, then called Catherine at once. However, Catherine's phone was turned off. Mrs. Prentice felt embarrassed and began to inwardly blame Catherine for turning her phone off when she needed her. 
However, she didn't dare to criticize Catherine out loud. On the contrary, she had to please her because she relied on her for favors. She knew Catherine's character very well. If Catherine found out that she had criticized her in public, she would ignore her in the future, and she would lose a lot of benefits. Well, I can't get through to her, so I can let you leave today, but I won't let you get away with it in the future, Mrs. Prentice said lamely. She still didn't know that Ava and Christina actually were much more influential than Catherine. Oh, by the way, tell Mrs. Flores that the woman who competed with you for the dresses is named Christina, and she married into the Ortiz family, uttered Christina. She revealed her identity because she didn't want Mrs. Hampshire and her store to be affected. She wasn't sure if Catherine Flores would be foolish enough to make a big fuss out of what Mrs. Prentice wanted. However, everyone in high society was aware of how influential the Ortiz family was, and no one was willing to mess with them. Therefore, even if Mrs. Prentice hadn't heard of Christina, Catherine must have. Whatever, Mrs. Prentice replied, snorting with disdain, then walked straight to the changing room. Although she acted confident, she was feeling quite anxious, because Christina wasn't afraid of Hal Flores' influence at all, so she might have been even more influential than the Flores family. Mrs. Prentice decided to do some research to learn more about the woman named Christina. If she really had a high status, it should be easy to learn some information about her. Within a few minutes, Mrs. Prentice changed her clothes and walked out. Although she really liked the dress she just tried on, she was too embarrassed to buy it after being kicked out of the store. In fact, even if she wanted to buy it, the store manager might not be willing to sell it to her. After Mrs. Prentice was gone, Christina told the store manager, Don't worry, if Mrs. Prentice continues to make a fuss about what happened, I can take responsibility. I promise you, it won't affect you and your store. Thanks, replied the store manager. Given what had just happened, she knew that Christina wasn't afraid of the Flores family. She had come into the store several times, and the store manager knew that she wouldn't make up a lie. Even if Christina wasn't influential, she had a good friend who was the wife of a senior official. As long as her friend was willing to stand up for her, the Flores family wouldn't bother to press charges because of what happened today. Therefore, she chose to believe Christina. Mrs. Prentice was gone, so Ava and Christina continued shopping. Although their mood was slightly affected, they still enjoyed looking around for beautiful clothes. Ava looked gorgeous in everything she tried on. In the end, she bought two dresses and a suit, after Christina convinced her to purchase them. Because Christina was a super VIP, they had a 20% discount and paid nearly $50,000 in the end. It was quite a high-end store. Interestingly enough, the clothes from Aurora were the same high quality as the clothes in this store, but Aurora had much more affordable prices than this store. The most expensive dress from Aurora was less than $5,000, which was quite cheap for a designer brand. It was understandable that this store was more expensive, because it was a famous brand that had been producing designer clothing for over 10 years. In addition, the owner of this store, Miss Hampshire, was a top clothing designer in the country, so her fame added to the prices. Once Aurora became more famous, their prices would go up too. In addition to Aurora, Ariana was planning to establish another brand that would be more affordable for everyday people. Even though the prices would be more affordable, the quality of the clothing would still be better than other brands. Ariana wanted her brands to be as famous for their high quality. After buying clothes, Christina insisted that they buy some shoes and bags as accessories. Ava wanted to decline, but Christina persuaded her. I know you don't want to spend much money because it's Henry's money, but he's your son. There is nothing you should be worried about. Henry is a high-ranking soldier, so his salary, benefits, and bonuses are very generous. My point is, Henry doesn't lack money at all, so you can spend as much money as you want. It's his way of showing love towards you, so you shouldn't upset him by refusing his gift. In the end, Ava agreed that she shouldn't upset Henry, since he wanted to take care of her. As a result, after being encouraged by Christina, Ava bought three pairs of shoes and three bags. She also told Christina to choose some accessories as well and that she would pay for them personally. Christina declined at first, but Ava insisted, so she agreed in the end. 
After that, Ava picked out some clothes for Master Ortiz and Henry, too. Even though they already had plenty of clothes, she wanted to bring back some gifts for them. When she paid for the clothes she planned to give to Henry and Master Ortiz, she used her own card. Although she wasn't as rich as Henry, she wasn't poor either. After they had been shopping for a while, Christina remarked, By the way, Ava, your skin is unbelievably good. What skincare products do you usually use? She couldn't help but notice that Ava's skin was in better condition than ordinary people's. It was flawless, without any wrinkles. Christina also took good care of her skin, but she didn't look nearly as good as Ava. Actually, Ava was a few years older than Christina, but Christina looked older than her. When Ava gave birth to Henry, she was 21, and Henry was 26 now, so she should be 47 this year. However, she looked like she was in her early 30s. Many rich ladies paid special attention to their skin, so it wasn't strange for them to look a little younger than they were, but Ava still looked different. Ava was taken aback for a second when Christina asked her that question, because she didn't use any skincare products, nor did she need them. As an immortal, her skin naturally looked very young, and she could stay beautiful for a very long time. If she hadn't been injured and disfigured in the accident 15 years ago, she would look even younger. However, it was hard for her to explain that to Christina, so she made up an excuse. Well, I use Cozy, and my skin has always been good, she claimed. Oh, that makes sense, Christina replied. Ariana also sent me a set of Cozy products, and my skin is much better now. Cozy is a great brand. In fact, I think it will soon become a famous international brand under Ariana's leadership. Christina couldn't help but compliment Ariana every time she talked about her, because she was so impressed with her. Definitely, Ava agreed. After they had their fill of shopping, they went to a cafe to drink some coffee and rest, then went home. Once Mrs. Prentice left the clothing store, she called around to her friends, who were also rich ladies, and asked them whether they had heard of a woman named Christina, whose husband's last name was Ortiz. Although her friends were rich, they weren't members of a high society like the Ortiz family, so most of them hadn't heard of Christina before. However, after asking five people, she finally had the answer. Mrs. Prentice's friend, who knew Christina, worked in the same government department as her, and she had met Christina before at a meeting. She heard of her family background from other people. When Mrs. Prentice's friend told her how influential Christina was, she was shocked, and her phone fell from her hand. She regretted threatening Christina, and she didn't dare to turn to Catherine for help now. Without another thought, she gave up the idea of taking revenge for what happened today. At 5 o'clock p.m., Ava and Christina went back to the Ortiz family's old house. Because Ava came back with a lot of shopping bags, she felt embarrassed when she saw Master Ortiz. She was worried that she might leave a bad impression on him. However, when Henry saw her shopping bags, he said with a sigh, Although you didn't get much, you can go shopping again the next time you're free. Ava was surprised. I bought a lot, she protested. Well, you deserve more. Even if you took everything in the store home, you'd still deserve more, uttered Henry. Ava felt touched. After that, she took out the clothes she bought for Henry and Master Ortiz. She didn't tell them that she paid for them with her own money because she didn't want to make a big deal out of her generosity. After all, what Henry had given her was much more than what she could give him. Henry and Master Ortiz were happy to receive the gifts from her, and they didn't care who paid for them. They cared about each other, so they were happy to receive gifts from someone they cared about. At this time, Ariana and her friends went back to downtown LA after spending the day touring the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Ariana's friends were exhausted after walking around for a whole day, but Ariana stayed energetic because she had a magical power to nourish herself. She didn't share her magical power with her friends, though, because it wasn't necessary. They weren't injured or sick, just a little tired. They had to learn to improve their own physical condition by exhausting themselves. For dinner, they decided to go to a fancy seafood restaurant together. When they were stuffed, they felt more energized. However, they decided to go to bed early. They didn't feel like going out to a bar or a club tonight. Ariana drove Harry and the boys to the hotel, then took the girls back to Aspen Haven. Harry and Lynn would fly back to Baltimore at 2 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, 
so Ariana would take them to the airport after lunch. Michael would be staying in the hotel for the time being, and he would move into his dorm when the new semester began. Clara and Rachel would continue to stay at Aspenhaven until they moved into their dorms as well. They would be busy with school after the fall semester began, but Ariana would hang out with them on weekends if they were free. They could also come and stay at her place on the weekends if they wanted to. However, since Logan and Evelyn lived at Aspenhaven, Henry still couldn't visit Ariana there. Therefore, if he was in town, Ariana would go to stay with him at Mountain River Garden. In that case, Clara and her friends could stay at her house, and it wouldn't cause her any trouble. Plus, if Ariana was busy, she would leave to deal with her business, and they could take care of themselves. When they were back in Aspenhaven, it was only 9 o'clock p.m., so Ariana called Ava and talked with her for a while. At this time, Ava and Henry were on their way back to Mountain River Garden, but they weren't going home. Instead, they planned to meet Felix in the hotel across from Henry's apartment. It was time for Henry to meet Felix. Although Felix always knew about the existence of Henry, and he had secretly helped him a lot, Henry didn't know him at all. Henry felt a pang of jealousy when he saw that Ariana called Ava instead of him. However, he was more happy than annoyed, because Ava was his mother, and it was a good thing if his future wife could have a close relationship with his mother. Ava got along quite well with Ariana, and she didn't view her as someone who was much younger than her. They were like friends, and Ava chatted with Ariana about what had happened when she went shopping earlier. When Henry overheard that a woman had deliberately made things difficult for Ava, he was annoyed. Although he knew ordinary people couldn't hurt his mother, he was still affected because he cared about her. After Ariana heard the story, she told Ava, If you encounter people that are unkind to you in the future, you can fight back, as long as you've done nothing wrong. No one can bully members of the Ortiz family. Ariana knew that Ava was a strong woman and could take care of herself, but she wanted to make sure that she knew that she had her support. Ariana would even be willing to defend her to the point of violence, but only as a last resort. I know, Ava replied, feeling a warmth in her heart because she knew that Ariana cared about her. Since Ava mentioned Catherine and the Flores family, Ariana started thinking about her plan to get revenge on them. Once Harry and Lynn left tomorrow, she would get down to serious business. I don't think that Mrs. Prentice woman would dare to do anything after learning about Aunt Christina's family background, Ariana pointed out. Bullies usually only dared to bully those who were weaker than them, so Ariana believed that Mrs. Prentice would stay away from Ava after learning about Christina's family background. Right, she shouldn't be so stupid, added Ava. Even if Mrs. Prentice wouldn't give up, there was nothing to be afraid of. Ava wasn't worried about what she could do, she simply disliked unnecessary trouble. They talked for a while longer before hanging up. Henry and Ava soon arrived at the hotel where Felix was staying. Ava had given him a call before they got there, so he was waiting for them. She hadn't told Henry that Felix had actually paid special attention to him over the years and had even secretly helped him a lot. She wanted to tell him earlier, but Ariana called her. Now that they had already arrived, she decided to tell Henry about that after he and Felix met each other. Henry had been nervous when he first met Ava, but he didn't feel nervous at all when he went to meet Felix. Although Felix was his mother's cousin, they were complete strangers and had never met before. However, since Henry was with Ava, there was no need for him to be nervous. Likewise, Felix wasn't nervous or anxious to meet Henry. After all, it wasn't the first time he had seen him before, although Henry didn't know that. However, Felix had mixed emotions about his relationship with Henry. He was amazed by his life experience and the way he grew up, but he was also worried about what he was going to face now that he was an immortal. No matter how difficult it would be, Felix made up his mind to side with Henry and do whatever he could to help him. Instead of meeting in Felix's hotel room, they met in a private room in the hotel's cafe. Right when Henry and Ava approached the room, Felix opened the door because he sensed them as soon as they were near. Hi, Felix, Ava greeted him, then said to Henry, Henry, this is my cousin Felix. You can consider him your uncle. 
Hi, Uncle Felix, Henry politely greeted him, but without much affection, because they were still essentially strangers to each other. Come on in, Felix invited them to come inside, and they went to sit on the sofa. After they were seated, he asked, Ava, have you remembered anything else? Bits and pieces, little by little, but still not much. I've only been able to remember what happened before I got married, Ava answered. She was slightly disappointed, but it was better than nothing. At least now she was sure of her identity and her relationship with Henry, which helped her relax. Since you're getting your memories back bit by bit, I'm sure you'll get all of them back sooner or later, pointed Felix, trying to comfort her. I know, Ava agreed. She had faith that she would get all her memories back eventually, but she was tired of waiting for it. However, no matter how impatient she was right now, she couldn't let herself get frustrated. You know what caused the accident that year, don't you? Henry asked all of a sudden. He was sure the answer must be yes. Ava might have forgotten the reason after losing memories, but Felix wouldn't. Both Ava and Felix remained silent for a while, instead of answering Henry's question. Felix glanced at Ava. He didn't know whether he should talk about it. Finally, Ava admitted, Yes, we know, but we don't know how to explain it to you right now. Can we talk about it after you reach a higher level? Henry would usually show respect and let the matter go, but he couldn't give up in this situation because it was important to him. Therefore, even though Ava didn't want to tell him, Henry tried a new tactic. He looked at Ava and told her, I went to the place where you and my father fell from the cliff. After coming back, I had a dream of you fighting against a man in a black robe who had a big mole under the corner of his right eye. In the dream, my father was pushed off the cliff and you jumped to rescue him. As an immortal, you should have been fine even if you fell all the way to the bottom, but the man in a black robe attacked you from behind. You lost your ability to fight back and fell down the cliff along with my father. Of course, this was just my dream, so I'm not sure whether it's true or not. Actually, Henry never had a dream like that. He had learned all that information from Ariana, who had seen those images in the magical flames. However, he thought Ava would be more likely to confess the truth if he said it was his dream. Plus, he couldn't expose Ariana's secret. Whether they believed it or not, he didn't have a better excuse for knowing that information. Ava and Felix were completely stunned when they heard Henry describe his dream, and Henry could tell from their reaction that it must be true. All he wanted to know now was who the man was and why he attacked Christopher and Ava. Ava and Felix thought only the two of them knew the truth about what had happened at the cliff. Of course, the attacker also knew the truth, but it was impossible for Henry to have met that man because he never would have let him survive. Therefore, they believed that Henry had a prophetic dream. It was common for immortals to sense what their relatives were doing. Even if they were thousands of miles apart, they could often still feel whether their relatives were in trouble. However, only those who really cared about each other could feel those connections. If there wasn't a real familial relationship, they couldn't sense each other's conditions. Ava and Christopher became an obsession in Henry's mind, so it was understandable that he often dreamed about them. In addition, over the past several years, Henry had been through a lot of dangerous situations, and Ava had sensed those times. Unfortunately, because she lost her memories of him, the feeling wasn't strong. When she had those feelings, she thought that Felix might be in trouble, but he denied it when she asked him, so she didn't think further about it. Since Henry had dreamed about the truth, there was no need for Ava to keep it secret any longer. Therefore, she took a deep breath and admitted, Although I can't remember every detail, your dream is basically the whole story. I suppose you'll find out sooner or later, so I might as well tell you right now. Ava paused, then continued, The man is my father, but we're enemies. As she said that, she smiled self-deprecatingly, but she didn't elaborate. However, when Henry heard that the man in the black robe was Ava's father, his breath caught in his throat. What grudge would make a man kill his daughter, he wondered. In Henry's memories, Ava was a person with great moral standards and a strong sense of justice. She would never do something to hurt her father. Ava continued, I was born into the Balbus family, 
one of the four dominant families in the world of immortals. As you may know, immortals are forbidden to marry mortals. Anyone who breaks that rule will be imprisoned or deprived of developing their powers. Because my family treated me so horribly as I grew up, I escaped from the world of immortals and went to the mortals' world. I met your father and we fell in love. We were married and I gave birth to you, but my family would never accept our relationship. My father came after us and your father was killed because of me. Ava blamed herself when she thought about Christopher's death and she was worried that Henry might blame her or have a bad impression of her as well. She had known from the beginning that she would bring Christopher great danger if they were together, but she still chose to be with him. Henry felt sick to his stomach when he heard that his so-called grandfather tracked down his parents so he could kill them. Even though Ava had broken the rules of the world of immortals, his grandfather didn't have to kill them, he was just a cruel man. Therefore, Henry made up his mind to take revenge. In addition, even though Christopher's death had something to do with Ava, Henry didn't blame her at all. Christopher loved Ava so deeply that he was even willing to die for her. Besides, if his parents hadn't been together, he wouldn't have been born. Henry could tell that Ava was upset, so he comforted her by saying, Listen, no one wanted that accident to happen, but you don't need to blame yourself. I know that my father wouldn't blame you if he was still alive, so I don't blame you either. Ava felt much better when Henry said that. My father is at a very high level, so I hope that you won't seek to take revenge against him, at least not for the time being. You're a talented immortal, so we can take revenge together once you've reached a high level, all right? insisted Ava. She knew that Henry wasn't impulsive, but she still needed to remind him to be careful and patient. I understand, Henry replied seriously. He and Ava stayed and discussed matters with Felix for another hour and a half before leaving at 11 o'clock p.m. When they got home, they went back to their own rooms. Henry called Ariana and told her about what he had learned. When Ariana heard that the man in black with a mole under his eye was Ava's father, she was amazed too, because she assumed that the man was Ava's enemy. She hadn't expected Ava's father to be so cold-blooded. Although Ariana was surprised at first, she soon accepted it. After all, she had been through the same situation of a father wanting to kill his own daughter. The only difference was that Ava was killed by her father directly, while Amelia was tracked down by a killer that her father hired. Ava was hunted because she broke a rule in the world of immortals, but Amelia was cruelly killed when she became useless in her father's eyes. Luckily, neither of them really died. Ava survived, and Ariana was reincarnated. Both of them got a chance to take revenge, so they had to make full use of it. By the way, are you free tomorrow afternoon? I plan to take my mom to the bungalow and meet Ezekiel. If you're free, we can go together, said Henry. Sure, I'm free tomorrow afternoon. Sounds like a plan, answered Ariana. The next day, Ariana and the other girls went to the Regalo Hotel at 10 o'clock a.m., they had lunch together, then drove Harry and Lynn to the airport. Harry and Lynn didn't want to leave, but unfortunately, they weren't accepted into any universities in Los Angeles, so they had to go back to Baltimore. After dropping them off, Ariana said to the girls, I have something to deal with today, so you can enjoy yourself on your own. Or, if you don't want to go anywhere, you can go home. Clara and Rachel discussed it for a while. They didn't know where they could go, so they went back to Aspenhaven. After driving the girls back to Aspenhaven, Ariana went to her office. She hadn't come to the office in a few days, because Chevy hadn't called her, which meant everything was going fine. However, as soon as she walked through the front doors, she spotted a commotion. A female staffer had just fainted in the lobby. Ariana couldn't help but wonder whether she brought bad luck to other people. Wherever she went, there were always all kinds of accidents. She immediately stepped forward to help the female staffer with her magical power, and with Ariana's help, the woman soon opened her eyes. Her body was fine, but she had fainted out of exhaustion. Her mother was hospitalized, and she was spending a lot of time taking care of her, so she fainted due to low blood sugar and not getting enough rest. 
Ariana wasn't the type of boss who would exploit her employees. Good health was a necessary prerequisite for good work, after all. If someone wasn't in good health, it was impossible for him or her to do their job properly. Accordingly, since the woman didn't feel well, Ariana told her to take the day off. Her company was already on the right track, and there wasn't much business to deal with at the moment, so it didn't matter if the staff relaxed a little. After that, Ariana went to Chevy's office. Although Chevy didn't tell her to come in, as the boss, Ariana had to meet with him regularly and talk about the business. Chevy told her that everything was going well. Then Ariana went to her own office. She called Nathan and asked him whether he knew which hospital Hal was staying in. If Nathan knew, she wouldn't need to bother Kay to help her find out. Luckily, Nathan knew the answer, because he was the director of the Flores family's company. Since Hal was sick, all the other major shareholders went to visit him, including Nathan. Therefore, Ariana decided to go visit Hal that night. She would bring along a contract because she was going to force him to step down from his position and give the job to Nathan. She told Nathan to email her the prepared contract and she would print it herself. After hanging up the phone, Nathan sent her the contract and Ariana printed it out in her office. In case Hal ruined it, she made several copies. Ariana was still at her office when Henry called her at 4 o'clock p.m. He and Ava were leaving for the bungalow, so Ariana set off too. Henry already told Ezekiel that morning that they would come to visit him later. Ezekiel heard that Henry's mother was an immortal earlier on. Because Henry was an immortal himself, it wasn't surprising that one of his parents was an immortal too. Henry told Ezekiel the story, but he didn't tell him everything. For example, he didn't tell him what Ariana saw in the flames, and instead, he simply told Ezekiel that he didn't know who caused his parents' accident. At first, Ezekiel was surprised when Henry told him that he was sure that his mother was still alive. He thought that she would have tried to find Henry and visit him if she had survived the accident all those years ago. Once Ezekiel learned that Henry's mother lost her memories, it all made sense. Ezekiel was curious about the world of immortals, so he was looking forward to meeting Ava. He wanted to learn more about it from her, and he even hoped that she could take him on a tour there. Before Ariana left her office, she told Chevy to arrange for someone to send the SUV back to the Regalo Hotel, and she left in a car owned by her company. Henry and Ava set off from the Ortiz family's house, so they arrived later than Ariana. Because Ariana arrived at the bungalow first, Ezekiel kept pestering her with questions about Ava. However, she only told him some unimportant information. There were some things she wasn't sure she could tell other people. So in answer to those questions, she said she didn't know and told Ezekiel to ask Henry instead. For example, she didn't tell Ezekiel that Ava had been tracked down and forced off the cliff by her own father. Ariana actually had something else to talk about with Ezekiel but it wasn't the right time because she didn't want Henry to arrive and overhear their conversation. Therefore, Ariana had to find another time to talk about it with Ezekiel. While they were waiting for Henry and Ava to get there, Ezekiel asked Ariana to practice the martial arts skills he had taught her. After they had practiced for about 15 minutes, Henry and Ava arrived. Ezekiel sensed them coming before they even pulled their car up. After all, he was an immortal at a high level, and he could sense other immortals up to 200 yards away. Ariana, however, could only sense low-level immortals within a 20-yard radius. If there was an immortal at a high level, like Ava, she wouldn't be able to sense them until she was within 10 yards of them. As for immortals at a very high level, like Ezekiel, she could only sense them when they were very close to her. The higher level an immortal had achieved, the better he was at hiding his aura, but his aura couldn't be hidden away completely. When Ava and Henry pulled up, Ariana stopped practicing her martial arts skills. Usually, junior immortals had to respectfully greet their seniors when they met, especially seniors of high social status. However, they were in the mortals' world now, so there was no need for them to keep that traditional rule. Therefore, Ezekiel just sat in the living room, enjoying his tea, waiting for Ava to come inside. Ava didn't sense another immortal until she entered the bungalow, and it wasn't a very strong feeling. 
She knew that Ezekiel was at a higher level than her, so it made sense that she couldn't sense his aura very well. Meanwhile, Henry couldn't sense him at all yet. He could only sense Ezekiel's immortal aura when he stood right next to him. As Henry and Ava approached, Ezekiel and Ariana turned to look at them. Neither of them said anything at first. Because Ezekiel was senior to all of them, the juniors should greet him first, according to the ancient rules. Even though they didn't need to take those rules very seriously in the mortals' world, it was still polite for juniors to greet their seniors first. Very nice to see you, Master Ezekiel, Ava greeted Ezekiel respectfully. She stood in front of him and bowed. Good afternoon, Master Ezekiel, Henry greeted him as well. Well, come on in, Ezekiel welcomed them kindly. He didn't view them as outsiders who were inferior to him. Although it was his first time meeting Ava, she was his student's mother, and he considered her family. After that, they walked in together. Ava carried two bags in her hands and handed them to Ezekiel after walking into the living room. Ezekiel, I've prepared some gifts for you. Please accept them, she said modestly. You didn't need to do that, replied Ezekiel, but he still took the gifts. They symbolized Ava's kindness, and he didn't want to offend her by rejecting them. Actually, he was happy to receive gifts. Have a seat, he ordered, and they were all seated. Ava, can you describe what the world of immortals is like? He asked Ava straight away. Ava nodded and answered. As modern society came into being, there were fewer and fewer immortals because magical power was getting harder and harder to find. It was difficult to harness the power and move up in levels, so immortals gathered together in order to survive. Because there is endless magical power in Echo Mountain, that is the location of the world of immortals, but it is only as large as a city with a few thousand people. Oh, I understand, nodded Ezekiel. He added, can I visit the world of immortals and take a look around? He didn't know much about what Ava had been through, so he wasn't aware of her grudge against her family. He didn't know that Ava was unwilling to return to the world of immortals. She hesitated, then replied, Sure, but not now. We can go there when the time is right. She knew that the Bulbous family wouldn't be able to hurt them with Ezekiel protecting them, but she still wanted to take revenge on her own. When will the time be right? asked Ezekiel. He had always wanted to go to the world of immortals, so he felt a little impatient. If Ariana and Henry could enter it, he would have asked them to take him there already. Well, to be honest with you, I have a long-standing grudge against my family, so I'm planning on taking revenge on them when I go back there. Ezekiel, I know you're at a very high level, and the Bulbous family won't be able to hurt us if we have your help, but we want to take revenge on our own. Henry just became an immortal. Although he's talented, his level is still low, so I plan to wait until he has reached a high level before putting my revenge into action, Ava explained. Although Ava hoped that Henry would reach a high level soon, she knew it was very difficult, and it could take a long time. After all, many talented immortals had spent dozens of years leveling up. Even though Henry was more talented than other people, it could still take him years to reach a high level. Of course, they might not be able to wait for such a long time, because their enemies might find them first. If they wanted to avoid their enemies at all costs, they could hide in Dower Mountain. It was possible that no one could find them there. However, that wasn't the best option, because Henry had his work to do. It would be irresponsible for him to give up his job just to avoid other immortals. Ezekiel nodded after hearing Ava's explanation. He didn't want to force her to take him to the world of immortals if she didn't want to. As for her grudge against the Balbus family, he didn't ask about it because it was her own business. He was curious about many things, but he knew what he should and shouldn't ask. In order to change the subject, Ezekiel complained about Henry. He's been too busy these days, and he doesn't have much time for cultivation, he said. Although he understood that Henry had a very important job, he was still a little frustrated at how little he had been able to train him. As Henry's master, he wanted him to be the best. After all, Henry's achievements reflected on him as his teacher. Unfortunately, Henry was too busy to come and train with him, and he sometimes wondered whether he had already forgotten him. 
Ariana wasn't even his student, but she called him more often than Henry did. As Ezekiel was thinking of Ariana, he remembered that she also wanted to become an immortal. If she succeeded, he would spare no effort to help her with her cultivation, whether she wanted him to be her master or not. She was his student's future wife after all, and besides, he had a very good impression of her. Henry apologized that he hadn't been able to visit Ezekiel, then said, Our team has field training the day after tomorrow. It'll last about three to five days. After that training, if there are no unexpected tasks that come up, I can rest for a week, then come back and concentrate on cultivation. Although he made attempts to practice his cultivation in his daily life, it was different when Ezekiel taught him face to face. He made slow progress when he practiced alone, but he could make much quicker progress with Ezekiel's help. Good, if it's possible, we can go back to the dower sex dwelling place together. There is strong magical power in the universe tower, and it will be very helpful for your cultivation. As for how much you can benefit from it, well, that depends on your talent, informed Ezekiel. The universe tower? Ava interrupted, sounding surprised. Does that still exist? She asked. The universe tower was the treasure of the dower sect, a holy place for cultivation, thanks to the strong magical power inside. It was also a place where one could practice clearance illusions. A clearance illusion was a process in which illusionary immortals fought against you. If you defeated the immortal, you could pass the level, which was proof of your ability. If you failed, you wouldn't be able to go up to the next level. When you were hit during the illusions, you would feel real pain, but you wouldn't really be hurt. The Dower Sect became the leading Orthodox sect not only because it was located in the Holy Land of Magical Power, which was of great benefit to cultivation, but also because of the Universe Tower, which was regarded as the best place for cultivation. Many people wanted to go inside to cultivate in ancient times, but only disciples of the Dower Sect were allowed to enter the tower. Even the disciples of the Dower Sect could only go in at a specified time, not whenever they wanted. After all, there were over a thousand disciples in the Dower Sect, and only ten people were allowed to enter the Universe Tower at a time. Even if the Universe Tower was empty, it was forbidden to sneak inside to cultivate, because there were guards at the gate. No matter who wanted to go inside, he or she had to be led inside by the tower guard. If anyone tried to break in, he or she wouldn't even be able to open the door, just like what happened when Ariana and Henry had tried when they visited Dower Mountain. Many people were attracted by the magical power of the Universe Tower and wanted to join the Dower Sect, but the Dower Sect had a very high standard for its disciples. Not everyone would be accepted. If they accepted everyone easily, they would have tens of thousands of disciples instead of just over a thousand. Yes, the Universe Tower is still there. It hasn't changed much, Ezekiel replied. Ava hesitated for a moment, then asked, Master Ezekiel, can I go with you? Although she wasn't sure he would say yes, because she wasn't a disciple of the Dower Sect, and outsiders usually weren't allowed to go there, she was willing to go to extremes to improve her cultivation in order to take revenge earlier. Of course you can. The Dower Sect is different now, and there is no need for us to obey the old rules, uttered Ezekiel. There were indeed strict rules in ancient times, but many things were different now, so they didn't need to obey them anymore. Ezekiel still wouldn't allow strangers to go there, but he would be happy to take the mother of his student. Ava beamed when Ezekiel agreed. Thanks, she replied. After that, they casually chatted with each other. When it was almost 6 o'clock p.m., Cecile prepared dinner, which they enjoyed together. After having dinner, they rested for a while, then left at 8 o'clock p.m. Because Ariana had something else to deal with tonight, she didn't go back with Henry and Ava. Instead, they got in their own cars and left separately. However, Ariana promised Henry that she would meet him back at Mountain River Garden later that night. Although they wouldn't sleep in the same room because Ava was staying there too, Henry would still be happy if they were under the same roof. Because Clara and Rachel didn't need Ariana to tour them around anymore, she had more free time. Since Ariana planned to see Hal that night, she had to disguise herself as Amelia first, but it was still early. 
It wasn't even 9 o'clock p.m. yet, so there would still be many people in the hospital. She wanted to go there when there were fewer people around because it would be more convenient for her to take action. Before that, she would deal with something else without her disguise. Ariana drove her car toward a remote place. She was going to release the ghost she encountered in the haunted house and ask him why he was in there. She had to find a way to make the ghost leave this world. It would be easiest if the ghost was willing to give up his obsession and allow himself to be reincarnated. However, if he refused to leave this world, Ariana could only let the sea monster destroy his soul, making it impossible for him to be reincarnated. She decided to handle the ghost first, although there were several other things in her telepathic eye space that she needed to deal with as well, including a mutant fox. If the fox agreed to follow her orders, she wouldn't mind taking it as her pet. It might be able to help her out in the future. If it refused, she would have to kill it too. Ariana went to a remote place, got out of the car, and released the ghost that she had encountered in the haunted house. When the ghost was released and saw that he wasn't in the haunted house anymore, he was scared. At the same time, he also sensed the aura of a girl who had magical powers. He was excited and turned to look at Ariana. To his surprise, he saw that it was the girl from the house whom he tried to attack. That was his last memory, and now suddenly he was in a completely different place. He had no idea where he was. Something must have happened that he didn't know about. Can you see me? asked the ghost without thinking. He could tell that Ariana was looking straight at him, but it was quite strange because usually humans couldn't see him. Yes, I can see you, Ariana confirmed. The ghost looked astonished and asked once again, Why can you see me? Because I'm not an ordinary mortal, Ariana responded. The ghost frowned and asked, Then what kind of mortal are you? I don't think it's necessary to explain that, Ariana replied. The ghost was taken aback for a moment, then continued asking questions. Why am I here? This is not the place I used to be. I brought you here, Ariana told him. You brought me here? The ghost asked, dumbfounded. How? Why did I feel nothing? It's a secret, said Ariana. She didn't bother to elaborate on how her telepathic eye space worked. Then why did you bring me here? Asked the ghost. Ariana suddenly realized that this ghost was different from all the other ghosts she had met before. Although he had a frightening appearance, his expressions and way of talking made her feel amused. Other ghosts gave off auras of strong hatred, while this ghost only looked surprised and amazed. Instead of feeling hatred, Ariana sensed that it was calm. I brought you here because I know you want to absorb my energy, but I can't let that happen, informed Ariana. How did you know? The ghost asked, shocked. His eyes couldn't help but shine with greed when Ariana mentioned absorbing her energy, but he didn't attack her. Ariana wasn't angry at his greed. She continued, I told you that I'm not an ordinary mortal, so I know what you want. All the monsters and ghosts like you want magical power, which you can absorb from my energy. She stayed patient and continued to answer the ghost's endless questions because she thought he was funny. You're right. Since you know I want to absorb your energy, why don't you escape? Asked the ghost, feeling confused about why Ariana was standing in front of him. He knew that she wasn't afraid, but he wanted to know why. I'm not scared of you. You don't even know how you got here, which means that I'm better and stronger than you. Ariana laughed playfully. The ghost was struck dumb for a moment. Since this girl was able to bring him here without him knowing about it, she indeed must be stronger than him. The ghost became even more afraid after realizing that. What do you want from me? He asked. He knew that Ariana wouldn't let him go easily. What do you think? You wanted to kill me before, replied Ariana with a meaningful smile. Do you want to kill me? Asked the ghost. The second he said that, he regretted it. Exactly, replied Ariana, giving the ghost a look that suggested she thought he was very smart. The ghost subconsciously moved backward a few steps and even let out a whimper of fear. He was the weakest ghost Ariana had ever seen. You better not get any ideas about running away, because I assure you, you won't be able to, Ariana warned him. 
The ghost was surprised, because he realized that Ariana wasn't joking. He pushed aside his desire to run away and asked, How will you destroy me? It depends on you. Can you give up your obsession and choose to be reincarnated on your own? Or do you want me to ruin your soul so that you'll never be reincarnated? Asked Ariana with a serious expression. Although this ghost didn't seem very evil, he was still a ghost and he shouldn't exist in the mortal's world. Obsession? How can I give up my obsession? Asked the ghost, sounding upset. The truth was, if it was possible, he would have given up his obsession earlier on. Is there anything you always wanted to do but couldn't do? I'm willing to help you, said Ariana. Really? The ghost asked as his eyes lit up in excitement. However, he looked upset again the next second. Can you really? He asked doubtfully. Although this girl in front of him was indeed different from other mortals, he didn't think that she had the ability to help him. I'm not sure whether I can help you or not, because I don't know what you've been through yet. If you don't tell me, how can I know whether I can help you? Ariana pointed out. She really wanted to roll her eyes, but she controlled herself. The ghost agreed she had a point. He hesitated for a second, then told Ariana the story. The reason why I still have an obsession is that when I died, the token of love my wife gave me was taken away by another person. Because I was unwilling to accept that, I became a ghost. Since then, I've been following the person who took my token. However, as a ghost, I can't touch mortals at all. Even if I could see the token in the hands of another man, I couldn't take it back. That person's grave is under the haunted house, so I stayed there ever since. So your current obsession is to get that token, Ariana confirmed. Because he was a ghost, he couldn't touch the token. However, the only thing he wanted to do was to take the token back. Right, replied the ghost. I'm afraid I can't help you with that for the time being, but I have a very skilled master. He might be helpful, Ariana admitted. She told the truth. She indeed couldn't help the ghost with this situation, so she could only turn to Ezekiel for help. The ghost was disappointed that Ariana couldn't help him. However, since she said that she had a very skilled master who might be helpful, he had some hope. Even though it wasn't very likely to happen, he badly wanted to get his token back. As a result, he agreed. Fine, it's worth a try, he said. Well, I need to put you away right now, and I'll let you out after I have the answer from my master. If you try to fight back, I won't waste time helping you, and I'll directly destroy you, Ariana warned him. The ghost hesitated for a second, then replied, Fine. Even though he doubted whether Ariana would really let him out again, there was nothing he could do but agree. After that, Ariana walked over to the ghost. She reached her hand out to touch him, and the ghost was instinctively scared of her, but he didn't resist. He was curious about how she would put him away, but he knew that she wouldn't tell him, so he didn't bother to ask. The second Ariana touched the ghost, he felt like his soul was being yanked away, and he lost consciousness the next second. After that, Ariana let out the other ghost in her telepathic eye space, the one she ran into at the construction site. Unlike the previous ghost, he was filled with strong hatred, so he looked evil. What was worse, he hated Ariana for capturing him and locking him away. Once he was released, he glared at her as if he wanted to kill her. However, he also knew that he was no match for her. Therefore, instead of attacking her, he tried to escape the second he was released. He planned to run away, then come back to take revenge after his powers had grown stronger. The ghost moved fast, flying far away from Ariana in the blink of an eye. It was impossible for her to catch him, so she let the sea monster out and ordered it, destroy that ghost. The ghost moved faster than Ariana could, but not as fast as the sea monster, so the sea monster soon caught him. The ghost was terrified, and before it could make a single move, he felt his soul being pulled away, and the sea monster swallowed him whole. The sea monster was able to absorb the power of the things it destroyed, so its level had increased a lot since it first met Ariana. Nevertheless, it was still far from being powerful enough to become a proper dragon, it wasn't able to increase its power every day because it stayed in Ariana's telepathic eye space most of the time. 
When the sea monster went back to Ariana, she put it away into her telepathic eye space, then let the mutant fox out. Once the mutant fox was released, it had the same reaction as the ghost, and was amazed by the big change in the environment. Its memories and consciousness stopped the second it was put into Ariana's telepathic eye space, so it felt like it had been transported somewhere else in an instant. The mutant fox came out with its back facing Ariana, so it didn't see her right away. It was greatly surprised by the hot weather, because it had been on a winter mountain before. Suddenly, it smelt like a human. It turned around at once, and its sight fell on Ariana. She looked familiar, but she was wearing different clothes than the fox remembered, which surprised it again. However, once it remembered that it was Ariana who had tried to injure it, the mutant fox became furious. It didn't have time to figure out why it suddenly appeared in a new place. It just began to attack her. Ariana didn't bother to stop it, but simply put it straight back into her telepathic eye space once it touched her. After that, she let it out again, but this time she caught its tail before it could move. Therefore, when the mutant fox regained consciousness, it found that Ariana was holding it by its tail. It was shocked and confused, which made it even angrier. It struggled, trying to get rid of Ariana, but failed. Damn you, stupid human, the mutant fox growled and snapped at Ariana. Let me go, I'm a powerful fox. Why should I let you go since you want to hurt me, Ariana calmly asked. The mutant fox was astonished when Ariana spoke to it. How is it possible that you can understand my language, it inquired. It hadn't expected Ariana to understand it, because normal humans could only hear growls and snarl when foxes spoke. Why wouldn't I understand your language? Ariana teased. The mutant fox was too shocked to reply. This whole situation was quite incredible. All right, let's get down to business, added Ariana. She didn't want to waste more time arguing with the fox. What matters do we possibly have to talk about? The mutant fox replied disdainfully. Matters concerning your life. Now, you have two choices. First, you could surrender and work for me, suggested Ariana, but the mutant fox interrupted her before she could finish. No way, I'll never surrender and work for you, it hissed. The mutant fox believed that it was superior to mortals, and it felt humiliated that Ariana wanted it to work for her. Well, if you're unwilling to do that, then you're left with only one choice. We can have a battle. If you win, you can do whatever you want to me. But if you lose, you'll die, Ariana warned. I don't think you have the ability to defeat me, said the mutant fox arrogantly. It completely underestimated her. Are you sure? Ariana sneered. She looked at the mutant fox smugly. Did you forget how you suddenly appeared here and how I caught your tail all of a sudden? You're still under my control. The mutant fox was taken aback. For the first time, it realized that it had suddenly shown up here because of this strange mortal, and she had easily caught its tail somehow. It couldn't get rid of her at all. In an instant, the mutant fox gave up the idea of defeating her in a battle. However, it would be humiliating if it surrendered itself to a mortal. However, if it didn't agree to Ariana's conditions, it could die. Why did I suddenly appear here? asked the mutant fox. It was more curious about that than anything else, because it happened so quickly that it seemed impossible. It's a secret, and I can't tell you, replied Ariana. Actually, a month has passed since you met me before, and you are now thousands of miles away from Dower Mountain. Hearing that, the mutant fox rounded its eyes in shock. It felt like only a second passed, but a month had already gone by. Plus, this place was apparently thousands of miles away from Dower Mountain. The fox wondered if it was dreaming or if Ariana was lying to its face. If it was true, Ariana indeed had great powers. The mutant fox hesitated to make a decision. It didn't want to surrender, but it was afraid of Ariana and her mysterious ability. If you surrender to me, you'll be a part of my team. If we're on the same team, I won't treat you badly, and I can even help you become immortal, said Ariana. She was trying to entice the mutant fox to surrender to her, but she was also telling the truth. The mutant fox looked excited at the prospect of becoming immortal, but it became suspicious the next second and questioned, how can you help me become immortal? 
You may be different from other mortals, but you're still a mortal. I don't think you're able to break the rules in this world. I don't trust you. Instead of being displeased at the fox's accusation, Ariana smiled and asked, Haven't you noticed that your injury is healed? Although he was only minorly injured back then. The mutant fox then realized that its injury was indeed healed. It blurted out, Did you do that for me? Of course, said Ariana. The mutant fox was astonished again by Ariana's unbelievable abilities. Of course, that still didn't prove that she could help anyone become immortal. Therefore, the fox retorted, Just because you healed my injury, that doesn't mean that you're able to help me become immortal. Actually, that was true, and Ariana knew it as well. She could heal the fox's injury, but she might not be able to help it become immortal. Therefore, she smiled and let the fox go. She wasn't afraid that it might escape, because it was already considering the condition she laid down. Besides, even if it tried to run away, it wouldn't be able to get far if she sent the sea monster after it. At first, the mutant fox instinctively wanted to escape when it was released, but it didn't because it was indeed intrigued by Ariana's proposal. Although it still had doubts that she could help it to become immortal, it still had hope. After all, becoming immortal was what the fox wanted more than anything, so it was unwilling to miss any chance that might help. Besides, the cunning fox thought that it wouldn't be a big deal if it surrendered itself to Ariana for a while, because after it became immortal, it would be powerful enough to do anything it wanted. However, what the fox didn't realize was that it wouldn't become immortal before the sea monster did, so it would always be less powerful than the sea monster. There was nowhere for it to escape. As for the sea monster, Ariana believed that she had its loyalty. Even if the sea monster was transformed into a real dragon, it wouldn't leave her. In fact, Ariana already had a plan. She would send the sea monster to protect Henry. Because Henry had an infinite pouch now, he could put the sea monster in it. She had talked about it with the sea monster, and it agreed to protect Henry if that was Ariana's order. Henry would be going to Dower Mountain in a few days, and he might enter the Universe Tower, so the sea monster was quite excited about that. Although Henry couldn't understand the sea monster's language, the sea monster could understand him. Therefore, they could get along well with each other. Besides, even though Henry couldn't understand it, Ezekiel and Ava could. As for Ariana's own safety, she would be fine without the sea monster, as long as she didn't encounter immortals at a very high level. Even if she met strong monsters or ghosts, she could easily put them into her telepathic eye space once she touched them, so there was nothing to worry about. Besides, she planned to train the mutant fox to work for her now. The fox would also be her helper. Although it was still relatively weak, there were some things it could do that she couldn't. She understood that the mutant fox wasn't very willing to follow her right now, but that might change over time. After all, it would take time for them to build trust. Of course, Ariana wouldn't force it to stay by her side. If the mutant fox wanted to leave her after becoming immortal, she wouldn't stop it. However, that was only on the condition that the fox didn't betray her or hurt her. If it dared to do that, she wouldn't hesitate to kill it. Moreover, she was working hard to become an immortal herself, and she was determined to be strong and powerful so that she could protect herself properly on her own. Suddenly, Ariana reached out her hand, and a few power crystals appeared in it. The mutant fox was completely amazed. It looked like the power crystals suddenly appeared magically. However, Ariana was just a mortal. How could she have magic? The next second, it smelt the pure magical power emanating from the crystals in Ariana's hand. Its eyes lit up at once, and it rushed towards Ariana without thinking, trying to grab them away from her. Although the fox didn't know what the crystals were, it could sense that they contained magical power. If it was able to get a large amount of pure magical power, it could greatly improve its cultivation. Although it had lived in Dower Mountain for years, and the magical power there was of good quality, it wasn't very helpful for its cultivation, so it made slow progress. The purest magical power existed in the Universe Tower, but unfortunately, the fox couldn't move close to it. 
Once it was within 30 feet of it, it felt great pressure and couldn't breathe normally. As a result, it had to keep its distance. However, the moment the mutant fox rushed to Ariana, she put the magical crystals back into her telepathic eye space, then avoided the mutant fox by slightly turning her body. The mutant fox was angry, but didn't dare to vent its anger on Ariana. It had witnessed her abilities, and now it realized that she also had what it wanted most, so it had to control its temper in front of her. What was that? The mutant fox asked Ariana. That was a kind of solidified magical power crystal. It's very pure. A single crystal might be of no use, but multiple crystals are of great help to immortals. They are even more effective than the pills made by the alchemist, Ariana replied, and the mutant fox's eyes shone with desire. Can you give me some? asked the fox. Why should I? You don't have any relationship with me. What's in it for me if I give them to you? retorted Ariana. The mutant fox understood what Ariana wanted from it. Although it was still a little reluctant to surrender, it hesitated for a second, then gave in. Fine, I agree to surrender to you, the fox promised. As long as it surrendered to Ariana, it would be able to get the power crystals and become immortal one day. Great, but let me be candid here. If you dare to betray me, I won't hesitate to kill you, so you must be loyal to me. When you become immortal, it'll be best if you're still willing to stay by my side. If you're not willing to do that, however, I won't force you to stay, added Ariana. She wasn't afraid that the mutant fox would leave her after becoming immortal. Cultivation was time-consuming and boring, and the mutant fox wasn't a talented one like Henry, so it would take years for the fox to achieve its goal, even if it had Ariana's help. Besides, even if it could reach the highest level of its cultivation, it still might not be able to become immortal. In order to become immortal, the mutant fox had to survive the heavenly tribulation, which was the most difficult part. If it failed, it would be ruined. Therefore, even if the fox reached the highest level of its cultivation, it probably wouldn't have the courage to accept the challenge of heavenly tribulation. Fine, I promise that I'll be loyal to you, promised the mutant fox excitedly. Are you serious? asked Ariana. Yes, I am, replied the fox. It knew that it wouldn't do any good to betray her. Given the mutant fox's current attitude, Ariana believed that it was serious, but she didn't know what would happen in the future. It was a cunning fox after all. Therefore, she stayed alert for the time being. She never trusted anyone at first. It had also taken the sea monster a long time to win her trust. Very good. I have something else to tell you, but it will take a while to explain clearly. I'm busy now, so let's call it a day. By the way, I might need your help later, but I need to put you away first. I'll let you out if I need your help, informed Ariana. How will you put me away? The mutant fox asked alertly. It was a little worried that Ariana wouldn't let it out again. After all, one could never be too careful. Since we've made an agreement, I promise I won't hurt you, Ariana assured the fox. The mutant fox decided to trust her, and it didn't ask further questions. After that, Ariana walked to the mutant fox and touched its head. It disappeared the next second and went into her telepathic eye space. By this time, it was almost 11 o'clock p.m. Ariana was afraid that Ava might worry if she went back to Mountain River Garden so late, so she called Henry. She told him that she still had something to deal with tonight, so instead of going back to Mountain River Garden tonight, she would meet them tomorrow. Henry was curious, so he asked her what she was busy with. He wasn't suspicious of her, but he wanted to make sure that she wasn't in trouble. Ariana didn't keep it a secret from Henry and explained to him that she had been busy dealing with the ghost and the mutant fox. Now that she had handled them, she was going to see Hal next. Henry asked her whether she needed his help. He was aware of her grudge against Hal, but all he knew was what she had told him, so he didn't know all of the details. Ariana assured him that she could do it on her own, so Henry didn't insist. Instead, he persuaded her to come back to Mountain River Garden tonight, no matter how late it was. Ariana thought about it for a while, then agreed. After hanging up the call with Henry, Ariana got in the car and disguised herself as Amelia before driving away. 
In order to not expose herself, she put her car into her telepathic eye space before she entered the part of town with surveillance cameras. After that, she walked to the roadside and took a taxi to the hospital where Hal was staying. It was nearly midnight when she arrived. Hal's heart illness was serious, so he had to stay in the hospital for a long time. Luckily, his life wasn't in danger, and he stayed clear-minded. Catherine, unfortunately, was quite exhausted these days, because she had to take care of Hal and Naomi at the same time. Luckily, Hal had his secretary and two mercenaries to protect him, so Catherine would go back to Naomi's side at night. Naomi was still unconscious from her attempted overdose. Although she wasn't in critical condition anymore, it was still possible that she wouldn't survive in the end. Catherine almost had a breakdown when both her daughter and husband were hospitalized. She didn't know what would happen to their family's business if both of them couldn't recover. Even though she had a small business herself, she didn't have the skills to run a business group like the Summit Corporation. She honestly didn't know what she would do if Hal had to stay in bed all the time. If Hal couldn't get back on his feet, she was definitely no match for the experienced directors in the Summit Corporation. The life she wanted involved having a lot of money without working at all. She wanted to go wherever she wanted, whenever she wanted. She honestly had no interest in running a company. Even the small business she owned was managed by other people, so she didn't need to spend much effort on it. The Summit Corporation, however, was different. It was an enormous company, and the director had to be very careful not to make any mistakes, which was quite a stressful burden to bear. Hal stayed in one of the hospital's VIP rooms, which wasn't in the same building as the other rooms. Ariana went straight to the VIP inpatient department building, but she didn't rush to go inside. Instead, she used her jade eyes to see room 505 on the fifth floor. That was where Hal's room was, according to what Nathan told her. She wanted to see the situation beforehand in order to be prepared. Currently, Hal was lying in the patient bed in his room, while his secretary was sitting on a nearby chair, looking at his laptop. They were talking about business. It was very late, but Hal was still busy dealing with his work, which showed how much he wanted to maintain his position of power. Although he owned the Summit Corporation, and he usually had absolute power to make all the decisions, the situation was different now. Since he was sick, it was hard for him to deal with his day-to-day -day work. If he wanted, he could leave his work to those he trusted. However, there were only a few people who Hal trusted, and many people he was suspicious of. Therefore, he insisted on doing the work on his own. In the living room section of Hal's VIP room, there were two mercenaries who stayed by Hal's side at all times, in case Amelia suddenly showed up to attack him. Although Amelia hadn't shown her face for days, Hal still couldn't relax. For all he knew, Amelia was secretly spying on him. Once he was left alone, she might appear. His secretary and security guards slept on the sofa in the living room, but only his secretary was able to sleep regularly. The security guards couldn't sleep often because they were worried that Amelia might come as soon as they closed their eyes. After knowing what had happened to their mates and how Amelia was able to intrude into rooms so silently that no one could hear her coming, they didn't dare to relax. If they absolutely needed to sleep, one of them had to stay awake while the other went to rest. Luckily for Ariana, she wasn't deterred by the mercenaries. Even though there were other people in Hal's room, no one could stop her from taking action. After Ariana surveyed the scene and created a plan, she entered the building and went upstairs. This was the VIP inpatient department, but there weren't strict rules about who could enter. However, the patient's room numbers were kept confidential. If relatives or friends of the patients wanted to visit, the patient needed to tell them their room number personally. Ariana went straight to the fifth floor, where Hal's room was, without encountering any difficulties. Because it was very late, there weren't many other people in the hospital. Because there was nobody in the room to the right of Hal's room, Ariana walked into it and used her jade eyes to see the inside of Hal's room. At this time, his secretary was sitting on the sofa and typing something on his laptop. He couldn't fall asleep in the hospital very easily, so he chose to work. 
Hal needed a break from work, so he closed his eyes to rest, but he couldn't sleep. He was too full of worries to sleep anymore. He lived in constant fear that Amelia might appear out of the blue and kill him. Even though there were two mercenaries guarding him and all the windows were closed in his room, he still believed that Amelia could find a way inside if she wanted to. He only dared to close his eyes to rest for a few minutes at a time at night, and he normally slept during the day. Because there was lots of people walking around in the hospital during the day, he thought that Amelia wouldn't show up then. When Ariana used her jade eyes to look into Hal's room through the wall, she saw two mercenaries and his secretary sitting on the sofa in the living room. If she wanted to get rid of them and attack Hal, her best option was to freeze them with her cold magical power. Unfortunately, it would take a lot of magical power to freeze three adults, and it would affect her strength. She didn't get a chance to use it earlier before. However, since she was going to get rid of them, she had to pay the price. No pain, no gain. After that, Ariana fixed her eyes on the three men in the living room, then released her cold magical power through the wall that separated her from them. When the three men felt themselves being attacked by the cold magical power, their bodies stiffened. The coldness quickly spread through their bodies until even their bones were frozen. It happened so fast that they didn't even know what had really happened. What's going on? Why do I suddenly feel so cold? The secretary gasped. He was smaller than the mercenaries, so he was affected faster. The two mercenaries exchanged a confused glance. No idea, one of them said. Neither of them could figure out what was going on either. They felt that the cold air was coming from behind them, but they could only see a wall when they turned around. How could the frozen air be coming through the wall? They wondered. Within seconds, the secretary was completely frozen and couldn't move at all. He was terrified, but he couldn't even scream. At the same time, the two mercenaries' limbs also became stiff. They wanted to stand up to check out the situation, but unfortunately, they couldn't move. They opened their mouths, trying to say something, but couldn't do that either. They were completely frozen and had no idea how it happened. It only took a minute for Ariana to freeze the three of them, but it cost her a lot of magical power. She felt fatigued and weak, and her face also turned pale, so she needed to rest for a while. After a minute, Ariana felt better and got ready to put her plan into action, confident that the secretary and mercenaries wouldn't be able to stop her. Thanks to the cold powers she just blasted them with, they had serious frostbite now, and they would need at least six months of treatment to help them recover or some of her power crystals. Actually, if they weren't treated within 10 minutes, their blood vessels would burst and they would die. Because their limbs were frozen, their blood vessels would also freeze, and their blood would be unable to flow. Ariana had no intention of killing them, so she wouldn't let their blood vessels burst. She would tie them up later and help them take a power crystal to alleviate their suffering. They wouldn't be permanently disabled, but there would be temporary after effects on their bodies that would limit their ability to move for a while. Although Ariana had no personal grudge against them, she didn't think they were good people, so they deserved the punishment. She used her jade eyes to see whether there were people outside in the hall before walking out of the room and going next door to Hal's room. She had everything she needed in her hands, including ropes and tape. Hal's room wasn't locked, so Ariana easily got into it. Even though the mercenaries and his secretary couldn't move or speak, they could hear things, so their stomachs dropped in fear when the door was pushed open. The first thought that had popped into their minds was that Amelia was coming. Nevertheless, they hoped that the person would be a nurse or a doctor, because then they would be rescued. Unfortunately, they were disappointed. They heard that whoever entered the room locked the door behind them, which meant they were there for a sinister purpose. The next second, Amelia came into view, the last person they wanted to see. They quickly realized that she must have been the one who somehow froze them. They still couldn't figure out how she managed to do it. They had never seen someone use freezing air as a weapon before. Ariana didn't bother to waste any time on them. She tied them up straight away and put a power crystal into each of their mouths before she sealed their mouths with tape. When she forced them to eat the pills, they all believed it was poison and thought she was trying to murder them. However, before long, they felt a flow of coolness in their bodies, and their frozen limbs started to feel better, which confused them. They didn't understand what Amelia was doing. 
However, although they felt better now, they still couldn't move, not only because they were tied up, but also because they still were partially frozen, and their limbs felt heavy and weak. After Ariana dealt with them, she walked to Hal's bedroom, which was through a separate door. In case he woke up and made any sounds, she used her magical power to slightly freeze his limbs through the door beforehand. In his bed, Hal suddenly felt attacked by the cold. He was startled, but he told himself that the temperature in the room must have simply gone down as the night became later, so he simply pulled his quilt tight around his body. However, he felt his hands become stiff and weak, and he suddenly felt worried about what was happening. Hal had been in poor health for the past several weeks, which was why he was in the hospital, so he was especially worried that his condition would get worse. He wanted to call his secretary, who was outside, but he found it very hard to open his mouth or make any sounds. His voice was so low that even he could barely hear it. After that, he tried to ring the bell to alert a nurse, but he couldn't even raise his hand, which scared him. He was afraid that he might die like that, in silence. The next second, he heard the sound of the door opening. He thought that his secretary was coming inside and felt relief rush into his heart. However, when Ariana appeared, he was shocked and frightened. Amelia? How did she get in here? Where are my guards? Why didn't I hear anything just now? He thought. He knew that Amelia had unbelievable abilities, but what she had done this time seemed impossible. Seeing Hal so terrified, Ariana put on an evil, satisfied smile and joked, Hey, it's been a while. I thought you might have forgotten me, but from your reaction, it seems that you haven't. Of course, Hal hadn't forgotten her. On the contrary, he had been on alert all day and all night, terrified she would show up. It seemed that no matter what precautions he took, he couldn't stop her from finding him. What do you want? Hal asked through clenched teeth. Because he wasn't seriously frozen, he was able to speak, but only with difficulty. His voice came out in a low hiss. Ariana smiled and said airily, I don't think you can manage the Summit Corporation very well right now. Why don't you let someone else do it for you? Hal became emotional once he heard that. Never, he protested. He thought that Amelia wanted to take over his position. Well, I don't think it's up to you, Ariana mocked. If you agree to sign this contract obediently, I can let you survive and live a good life until you're old. If not, I'll simply kill you. After all, I've killed countless people before. I would have no qualms about killing another one. If you're dead, you'll lose the Summit Corporation anyway, and I would have plenty of ways to get control of it. Hal's expression changed from anger to fear. He believed that Amelia wasn't bluffing. He didn't want to die, but he was reluctant to give her his company. However, he had to make a choice right now, and he chose to live. As long as he survived, he might still have a chance to get the Summit Corporation back. However, if he was dead, he would have nothing. Nevertheless, it wasn't an easy decision, and Hal hesitated to say yes. The Summit Corporation was practically his whole life. Ariana continued, What, are you doubting my ability? I have a lot of evidence of the crimes you've committed. If I send it to the government, the Summit Corporation could be shut down. Although you have a lot of influence in this city, there are many families who are even more powerful. I don't take action without good preparation, so I can be honest with you. I have much more powerful support than you do. Hal didn't doubt it. Because Amelia wasn't an ordinary person, he fully believed that she had powerful support and connections. Oh, by the way, do you know why the Shadow Gang encountered trouble, then quickly went back to normal? Do you know why Dawson Jeffs was able to safely come back after I abducted him? He didn't rescue himself. I let him go. When you refused to pay the $5 billion to rescue him, you lost his loyalty. After all, he has made far more than $5 billion for you, but you were too stingy to pay that amount of money for him. I convinced him to work for me afterward. So the Shadow Gang listens to me now, informed Ariana. What? Hal exclaimed, rounding his eyes in shock. He couldn't believe that Dawson had betrayed him. Hal knew that it hadn't been smart for him to refuse to pay the $5 billion ransom to rescue Dawson. However, he had chosen to do that in order to trick Amelia into thinking that he didn't care about Dawson. Then, Dawson would be useless in her hands, so she might let him go. 
he hadn't expected Dawson to betray him. Even though it was his fault, he was still furious at Dawson's betrayal. In his eyes, Dawson was his subordinate and should be loyal to him no matter what happened. Have you made up your mind? I don't have time to waste on you. You have one minute to tell me your decision, or you can't blame me if I get a little ruthless, Ariana threatened. Then, she took out her phone and set a timer for one minute. Hal was still very unwilling to yield to Amelia, but he was cornered. In fact, he already knew what he had to do, but it was difficult for him to say it out loud. When there were only 10 seconds left, Ariana counted backward out loud. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. As she did that, Hal felt like she was counting down to his death. The second she said three, he made up his mind and blurted out, Fine, I agree. In the end, he was a coward, and he didn't dare to risk his life. After Hal agreed to sign the contract, Ariana smiled with satisfaction and smugly said, Very good. Then, she took out a power crystal and helped him swallow it. Hal had the same fear that it might be poison, so he wanted to struggle, but he was too weak to do so. He could only watch as the pill was forced into his mouth. It melted on his tongue in an instant. What was that? He demanded. It's a medicine that will help your limbs recover. You need to sign your name on the contract after all, replied Ariana. Hal felt relieved as he realized she must be telling the truth because she indeed needed him to sign his name. Within 30 seconds, he began to feel the change in his body. His limbs weren't so stiff, and he was able to move his hands now, but he still felt much weaker than he had felt before Amelia showed up. However, he was strong enough to sign his name. "'You promise to let me go once I sign the contract, right?' asked Hal. "'Of course. I will keep my promise,' assured Ariana firmly. She truly had no intention to kill Hal. She simply wanted to torture him." After that, she took out the contract and let Hal sign his name. He didn't even bother to read the contract and simply signed it on the dotted line. After all, he lost his company now, so it was meaningless to read the contract. When Hal signed his name, Ariana took a video of him without him knowing, in case he tried to back out of the deal in the future. She had to keep the video as evidence. Of course, after he signed the contract, it would be no use trying to back out. Ariana simply kept the evidence to avoid unnecessary trouble. After he signed two copies of the contract, Ariana took them, then left, feeling satisfied. Hal could only watch in despair as she walked out of his room. He was angry about what she forced him to do, but he could do nothing about it. Luckily, she didn't want his property, she just wanted his shares of the Summit Corporation, so he wasn't penniless. When Ariana went back to the living room, she untied Hal's secretary and security guards. Although they were free now, their bodies were very weak, and they couldn't fight against her. Therefore, they did nothing as they watched her walk away. Once she was gone, they walked slowly into Hal's room to check on him. They were relieved after they saw that he was still alive. After all, the two mercenaries were hired by Hal. If he was killed under their protection, their reputations would be ruined and it would affect their career. The secretary would also be in trouble if Hal was hurt because he left his side. Right at that moment, Hal abruptly spat out a mouthful of blood before he passed out. His secretary rang the bell at once to call the doctor. Ariana sent Nathan a message after leaving the hospital. She told him that she succeeded and would give him the contract tomorrow. She knew that Nathan wouldn't be sleeping after he learned that she was going to meet Hal because whether or not Hal signed the contract would change the course of his life. Nathan indeed was still awake, waiting for Ariana's message. As time went by, he became more and more anxious. It wasn't because he didn't believe in Ariana, he believed that her plan would be a success, but he couldn't sleep until he heard the result. When he saw Ariana's message, he almost jumped up in excitement. She succeeded. Their plan really succeeded. Now he was sure that he wouldn't sleep a wink that night because he was too excited. What made him most excited was what would happen to Hal. He would probably have another breakdown after losing the Summit Corporation, which Nathan looked forward to seeing. Even if he didn't witness it personally, he was happy to know that Hal was suffering. 
All of a sudden, Nathan's excitement was replaced by a feeling of sadness. He got up from his bed and went to the study. Then he took out a photo album from his drawer. He opened the album, and the first picture he saw was a family photo of him and his parents. Nathan was the only one who was still alive. Nathan sighed and said out loud, Dad, I didn't take revenge with my own hands, but someone did it for me. I'll soon take over Hal's company, and he's suffering now. I didn't kill him, but I don't think he can live long. When Ariana got back to Mountain River Garden, it was nearly 1 o'clock a.m. Luckily, she got home quickly, because it was very late, and there was not much traffic on the road. Normally, it would take 40 minutes to drive from the hospital to Henry's house, but she arrived in 20 minutes tonight. She didn't want to keep Henry and Ava waiting for her, so she drove as fast as she could. At this time, Henry and Ava were still awake. Because they were immortals, they wouldn't feel tired even if they didn't sleep for days. Sometimes, immortals spent months practicing their cultivation and only slept for a few nights during that time. They would feel more energetic when their inner power moved around in their bodies and would only feel tired after their practice was over. Although Henry and Ava were waiting for Ariana to come back, they didn't sit there and do nothing. Instead, they practiced martial arts skills in the backyard. It was very late, but Henry had a big yard, surrounded by many trees and hedges, so his neighbors wouldn't hear or see them. Before Ariana's car pulled up to the front of the house, Henry and Ava sensed her coming. They stopped at once and went back to the living room. Ariana parked the car and walked to the front door, but Henry opened the door before she even touched it. She felt a little guilty when she saw that he and Ava were still waiting for her. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I was busy doing something else, Ariana apologized. Even though she knew that Ava wouldn't be upset, she felt bad that they had stayed up so late because of her. It's fine, Ava assured her. She didn't want Ariana to feel guilty, so she explained. We're immortals, so we'd be fine even if we didn't sleep for two weeks. Besides, we didn't sit there and do nothing. We were actually practicing martial arts in the backyard. Henry is always busy, so we seized the chance to squeeze some practice in. If Ariana was an ordinary young woman, Ava might be worried about her safety, but she knew that she could take care of herself. Moreover, she knew that what Ariana had to do was very important. There were some things that needed to be done at night. Ava had overheard Henry's phone conversation with Ariana, so she knew that she had been dealing with monsters and ghosts. It was smart of Ariana to deal with them at night because there were people around during the day and it would cause trouble if others saw her making monsters appear and disappear. As for Hal, she had heard a little about Ariana's grudge against him, so she understood her behavior. How did everything go? asked Henry with concern, although he knew that Ariana never failed. It's done. I threatened Hal into signing the shares transfer contract, so his shares of the company are under Nathan's name now. Hal no longer controls the Summit Corporation, and he'll definitely have a breakdown soon. Even though I'm allowing him to live, he can't live long given his condition. Many innocent people have been killed because of him, and he should pay for it. He didn't even hesitate to kill his own daughter and brother, so he must be seriously punished. If Nathan and I didn't take revenge, his relatives would have died for nothing. Ariana spoke passionately. When Ava heard that Hal had killed his own daughter and brother, a lump formed in her throat, because she had been betrayed by her close family member as well. She had the same instinct of taking revenge against that person. If any problems arise in the next few days, and it's not convenient for you to handle them, feel free to tell me and I can help you, said Henry. All right, Ariana agreed. If she really needed Henry's help, she wouldn't hesitate to let him know. By the way, there's something I need to tell you, she added, looking at Henry with a serious expression. What is it? he asked. Ava noticed the serious look on Ariana's face, and she was afraid that she might hinder their conversation. So she said, Well, I should go back to my room now. I'll give you two some space. Please, stay. I need you to be here when we talk about this, Ariana pleaded. Ava looked surprised, but she nodded and didn't leave. Ariana took a deep breath and continued. The thing is, Henry's level is still low. He's no match for immortals who are at a high level, and he might be in danger in the future, so I want to give the sea monster to him. It can help him if he encounters danger. What? 
Both Henry and Ava exclaimed in unison. Both of them were shocked, but for different reasons. Henry was aware of the sea monster, so he was surprised that Ariana was going to give such an important creature to him. Ava, on the other hand, didn't know that Ariana had a sea monster in her possession, and she was amazed by that. Henry refused at first. No, if you give the sea monster to me, what about you? I think it should stay with you to keep you safe, he insisted. It wasn't because he didn't want to accept Ariana's kindness, but because he was worried that Ariana might be injured if the sea monster wasn't by her side. We're in different situations, Ariana explained. I'm immortal, and I won't encounter greater danger than you do. You are facing danger from the Bulbous family, as well as from strong monsters and ghosts. The essence of immortals is very desirable to them, and they'll try to feed on your energy if you encounter them. What if they attack you and you fail? We don't want that to happen. Well, Henry hesitated. He knew that compared with Ariana, he was indeed in a more dangerous situation, but he was still worried about her safety. Even if I encounter monsters or ghosts in the future, I can deal with them, Ariana insisted. As she said that, Henry understood what she was talking about. She had her telepathic eye space, which could capture her enemies and protect her from danger. Ariana's enemies were mainly monsters and ghosts, because other ordinary people weren't usually stronger than her. Henry wasn't worried that she would fail in a fight against another mortal. He was silent for a few more minutes as he thought it over. He knew that Ariana was determined to give the sea monster to him, so it was useless for him to protest, or it might lead to an argument. Ariana was never afraid of arguing with him, but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to make her happy. Ariana continued, Besides, a mutant fox that I captured has surrendered to me. I'll train it to be my helper, so I won't need the sea monster. You can do your cultivation with the sea monster from now on, which will help it improve as well. It's a win-win situation. Fine, I accept. Henry agreed in the end. Overall, he felt quite touched that Ariana cared so much about him. When Henry agreed, Ariana smiled and let the sea monster out of her telepathic eye space. In an instant, its giant body appeared in everyone's sight. Ava was amazed, not because of the existence of the sea monster, but because she didn't know where it came from. She thought that Ariana might have an infinite pouch, too. Although she was curious, she knew that she shouldn't ask about that right now. When the sea monster saw Ava, it subconsciously moved backward. Because it was at a lower level than her, it was afraid of her. If the sea monster fought against Ava, it might lose, but it could do a lot more damage than she could. It could ruin a whole building by sweeping its tail. Both of them had their own advantages. Ariana noticed the sea monster's fear and explained, This is my fiancé's mother. Don't worry, she's on our side. The sea monster was relieved and greeted her. Nice to meet you. Ava was at a high level, so she could understand the sea monster's language. She replied, Nice to meet you too. Henry, however, needed to go up another level to understand the languages of monsters and ghosts, so we couldn't clearly understand what they were saying. Henry, put the sea monster into your infinite pouch for now, Ariana instructed. All right, agreed Henry, and took out his infinite pouch. The next second, the sea monster disappeared into the air and went into the magical bag. Henry's infinite pouch wasn't quite as useful as Ariana's telepathic eye space. If he wanted to take anything out of it, he had to open it, while Ariana could simply use her mind to put things in and take them out. After that, Ava asked, Ariana, where did you get the sea monster? I went to deal with something in Rome several months ago. Several friends of mine told me that there were treasures under the ocean, so I dived to search for them. Then I met the sea monster and kept it as my helper, Ariana explained. Ava was impressed and didn't ask further about it. There were actually guns and other things in Ariana's telepathic eye space that she needed to give to Henry, but she would wait until Ava was gone. By now, it was very late, so they went to sleep in their own rooms. When Ariana was back in her room, she sent Henry a message. She told him about the guns and explosives. He would be leaving tomorrow afternoon and going back to the military base, so she had to give them to him before he left. However, she wouldn't give all of them to Henry. She planned to keep some to protect herself. The next day, 
Ariana and Henry got up early in the morning and went on a run together. Ava didn't join them because she knew that they needed some private time together. Instead, she stayed at home and made breakfast for them. Ariana and Henry actually didn't have anything private to talk about with each other, but they enjoyed casually chatting with one another. Are you going to go to the Ortiz family's house today? asked Ariana. Not today. My mother doesn't feel completely comfortable there on her own, and I'm leaving this afternoon. I don't want her to be left alone. You can go there with her if you're free on any of the days that I'm at the military base. I'm sure my grandfather would be thrilled if you stopped by for lunch or dinner, answered Henry. All right, I'll do that sometime, Ariana agreed. Although Ava hadn't gotten all her memories back yet, she was still a part of the Ortiz family, so she should visit them once in a while. Besides, spending time with them could help her regain her memories as well. After running in the morning, Ariana and Henry went back home, where Ava had prepared breakfast for them. They then changed their clothes before they ate breakfast together. As they sat down to eat, Henry felt happier than ever. He finally felt the happiness that came from being reunited with his mother, which only added to the happiness he had in his romantic relationship with Ariana. All of a sudden, Henry said, Mom, I missed your cooking. Ava was surprised and said at once, If you'd like, I can make you lunch today. I'll cook my special versions of all your favorite foods. She didn't remember much about what he might like. She thought Ariana would help her with it. Although Ava had been back for a few days now, she had only eaten either at the Ortiz family's house or at restaurants, so Henry didn't have a chance to eat her own cooking yet. Good idea. We can eat here today, agreed Henry happily. Great, then I'll go grocery shopping later, replied Ava. We'll go together, Ariana offered. She didn't want Ava to have to go alone. Great, let's go together, Henry echoed. Ava didn't refuse. It was decided that they would go grocery shopping at 10 o'clock a.m., so they each had time to deal with their own things after having breakfast. Ariana wanted to do the dishes, but Henry stopped her. Ava also pulled her away from the sink and insisted, Henry wants to take care of his girl. Just let him do it. Ava wasn't the type of woman that believed that her future daughter-in-law should do all the housework for her son. She believed the young couple should make their own decisions about chores and do what they could to share the work. Ariana and Ava went to rest for a while in the living room. Henry joined them after doing the dishes. Afterward, they went to the backyard to practice their cultivation for a little while. Although Ariana wasn't an immortal, she joined them. Ava sometimes felt worried when she thought about Ariana and Henry's future together. Because Henry was an immortal, he would age slowly as his cultivation improved. However, although Ariana had many unbelievable skills, she was immortal and she couldn't stop herself from aging and eventually dying. Plus, it was very dangerous for a mortal to become an immortal. If the mortal made a mistake in the process, he or she might die. Therefore, from ancient times up until the present, very few mortals had successfully become immortal. Ava figured that both Henry and Ariana must have the same worry about their future, although they said nothing about it. Therefore, she didn't say anything about it either, because she didn't want to worry them even more. They stopped practicing at 9.30 a.m., because it was a hot day, they were already sweating. They each took a shower in their rooms before they went to the supermarket together. Although there was a grocery store just across the street, it was small and didn't sell all the kinds of food they wanted. Therefore, they decided to walk to a supermarket a few blocks away. However, when they almost reached the entrance, they ran into Bradley Kent. Bradley's eyes lit up the second he saw Ariana, but he was nervous when he noticed that Henry was with her. He put on a serious expression at once. Hi, Henry. Hi, Ariana, he greeted them. Because he didn't know Ava, he just looked at her and smiled at her. Hey, replied Henry in a plain tone. Are you in town to see your older brother? asked Ariana. Yeah, I had an argument with my family, so I came to stay at my brother's place, said Bradley with a shrug. After that, he asked, Where are you guys headed? To the supermarket, answered Ariana. Oh, then I won't take up more of your time. See you, nodded Bradley. If Henry wasn't there, he would talk with Ariana a bit longer. However, because of Henry's presence, he didn't dare to chat with her for too long. After that, they separated and Ariana explained to Ava, 
He's the grandson of Master Kent, Grandpa Ortiz's old friend. His name is Bradley. Then, they entered the supermarket, which was quite busy. When the three of them walked through the crowd, they were very noticeable. Many people paid special attention to them and tried to guess what kind of people they were. Most people guessed that Ariana and Henry were a couple, although some people thought they might be brother and sister. As for Ava, she didn't look old enough to be their mother, so people guessed that she might be an older sister or aunt. Ariana, Henry, and Ava didn't care about the people who were staring at them and discussing them, so they started walking down the aisles and choosing their food. They didn't buy much meat and instead selected many kinds of fresh vegetables. After grocery shopping, Henry carried the shopping bags. Although they bought a lot, Henry was very strong, so it was easy for him to carry it all. They started to cook lunch as soon as they were home. Both Ariana and Henry helped Ava wash the vegetables, but they didn't interfere in her cooking. After all, Henry wanted to eat his mother's cooking. If they helped her with it, they might mess up her special recipes. Therefore, when Ava was busy cooking, Ariana and Henry went to the study. Ariana took the guns, drugs, and explosives out of her telepathic eye space, and Henry put them into his infinite pouch. It seems that the Shadow Gang is quite influential. They got their hands on so many illegal things, Henry commented. They had a lot of gold bars, too. I'll have to find a place to exchange them for cash in the future, informed Ariana. Can I help? asked Henry. No need, I can handle it, she assured. Henry frowned slightly and asked, Do you plan to turn to Sid for help? Ariana was taken aback for a second, not because Henry was right, but because she almost forgot about Sid. They hadn't contacted each other for a long time. I totally forgot about him until you brought his name up. I'm not going to see him, I promise, Ariana assured Henry, knowing that he was jealous of Sid. I'll ask the Shadow Gang for help. It's an illegal gang, and the members work for me now. I'm sure they'll know where I can exchange the gold bars, she added. Hearing that, Henry felt much better, and he hugged Ariana and kissed her fiercely. After a few minutes, Ariana pushed him away. All right, it'll be embarrassing if my lips are swollen, she teased him. Henry pretended to plead for more, but he was just joking. Although he longed to lead Ariana to his bedroom right now, he knew it wasn't a good time. His mother was in the next room, after all. Ariana pulled Henry back into the living room, and they sat on the couch together to watch TV. About half an hour later, Ava finished cooking, and they began to have lunch. Henry felt a strong sense of nostalgia when he saw the familiar dishes that his mother had prepared. He couldn't help but remember eating them in his childhood, with his parents by his side. He used to have both a father and a mother, but now... Even though Henry had mixed emotions, he didn't show anything on his face. It wasn't sensible to live in the past, and he should be happy that he had reunited with his mother. He should think more about his future, about how to improve his cultivation and take revenge against the Bulbous family. Plus, Ariana also needed to figure out a way to become an immortal. Henry felt sad again when he thought about that. Ezekiel had told him it would be very dangerous for Ariana to attempt the process of becoming immortal, and he didn't want her to risk her life. Henry wondered if Ariana had also asked Ezekiel about the possibility of becoming an immortal as he had. He assumed that she had, although she didn't say anything about it to him. Nevertheless, he knew she ached to become an immortal. Because she didn't want him to lose his powers and miss out on the chance to live a long, healthy life, she had to do her best to get up to his level. Therefore, Henry decided he would have another talk with Ezekiel. If Ariana really wanted to endure the process to become immortal, he wanted to know about it. To be honest, he wasn't sure if he would support the idea or not. After all, if she remained immortal, he had already made the decision that he would die with her, no matter how long or short of a life she lived. He didn't think he could live a meaningful life without Ariana. On the other hand, if Ariana insisted on enduring the process to become immortal, Henry couldn't stop her from doing it. He knew her character very well. As Henry's thoughts swarmed in his mind, his brow creased with concern, which caught the attention of both Ariana and Ava. Ariana didn't ask him anything, but Ava blurted out, "'What's wrong? Don't you like the food?' "'Of course I do,' Henry assured her. 
I just thought of something else. It's not a big deal. I love these dishes. They're delicious. Ava was still a little concerned about him, but she didn't ask further about what was on his mind. He wasn't a kid any longer, and he could make decisions on his own. Well, I'm glad you like them. If you want, I can cook more often for you, Ava offered. Nothing made her happier than seeing that her son loved the food she cooked. Wonderful, Henry replied. Ava was really a good cook, so all of them stuffed themselves with the delicious food. After having lunch, Henry did the dishes like he always did. Although Ava didn't think there was anything wrong with that, Ariana felt a little guilty. However, she could do nothing about it, because Henry insisted he didn't need her help, and Ava pulled her out. Because Ariana had something else to deal with, she left at 1 o'clock p.m. Henry would be going back to the military base at 3 o'clock p.m., so she said goodbye to him before she left. Although Henry had left the military base with Gerald, he had stayed in Los Angeles for longer, in order to spend time with Ava. Gerald had already gone back to the base, so Henry would be going back alone.